Okay, um, <clears throat> uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, depends where you're joining us from. I am Mazichika Austin. Uh, we are here once again to talk about insurgency in Nigeria and its complex outlook uh, using a case study of of northern Nigeria and uh, we really want to look at it um, <clears throat> from a very multifaceted outlook and that is exactly what we would love to achieve this evening sorry um, to look at insurgency in northern Nigeria from a very multi-dimensional uh, approach and it will be very very important we we make it we give a justice to it so before I proceed I would love to find out from us if um, we are reaching out loud and clear and if we are reaching out loud and clear then we have no other cause than to proceed because time is not much on our side so we are <coughs> looking at insurgency from a very multifaceted approach insurgency in Nigeria but we are specifically or geographically looking at northern Nigeria. Why? Because northern Nigeria is a hotbed of insurgency in its format, in its form. The breeding point of insurgency in West Africa is northern Nigeria. And that's why we are going to take our case study from that part of the world. Then show points of what do I mean by that? Sometimes we discuss issues not because of our expertise on the topic in discourse, not because we have taken a very reasonable no, uh, number of time to make an investigations. No. In most cases I've realized that we just discuss issues from a peripheral knowledge. We know about the topic of discourse. And we end up not really um, giving a sound judgment to whatever the topic of discourse is in question. Say for instance, every reasonable, every responsible country have center for this, center for that. Like in some of the schools overseas, I'm talking about places of learning, um, institutions of learning. When you go to those institutions, apart from the nominal departmental structure or faculty structures we, we are, as the case may be that we used to know that educational systems are structured in western society we have another uh, structures that exist and what is these structures the structures that exist within these schools of learning are places we, 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 we you know we hear things like center for this study you hear like Center for Gender Study, Center for African Study, Center for Sub, uh, so West Africa Sub Region Study, Center for this. The sense of those centers, the sense of those specified areas of studies is to encourage high knowledge, high information assessment, know how, high know how, professional, you know. Um, would I, should I say, professional interest and passion on those areas. And this is really what I think that is really seriously lacking in this part of the world. People discuss topic 
or people discuss what they don't necessarily uh, necessarily have passion to investigate on and that is why most times you find out a lot of you know you find out if you find out that people misconstrue issues misrepresents uh, represent issue in most cases people you know try not to really give the critical picture of whatever be the social development so and one of the things i think that is also lagging in the whole social discourses when people talk about insurgency not is this very fact that the so-called opinion makers the so-called social commentators the so-called uh, media experts so to say don't even have an investigatory input or penetrations in what they are talking about let me give you instance let me give you a critical instance or a a, 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 a friendly or should i say a close by instance you know most when you listen to most of the things that are being written on the pages of Nigerian newspaper, local newspapers, in terms of IPOB, in terms of Eastern Security Network, sometimes it does not basically mean that government has bribed some media houses, which I know is a common norm in Nigeria system, where the government bullies and bribe them, forcing them to represent what the government wants, any information to be represented to the people. But outside that, most of Nigerian so-called media experts don't even investigate issues. They just sit idly on their parlor or their sitting rooms and start writing about a structure, a social structure they have no information about. They don't know. In fact, most of them find it difficult to even come down to the location of, you know, these people to find out what actually is this movement all about they hardly because of this very fact that they believe that they have a reading population they have a new an audience that are as stupid as them what is this audience this audience that whatever they see on the pages of newspaper they swallow it hook line and sinker and try to ask questions so when journalism miss stupid audience in a simple analogy that system of journalism can couple anything they want and feed those mentally and those high population and that's exactly what is happening on nigeria and that's why you also hear people they say they are intellectuals they say they are educated educated they say they are exposed but when you hear them talking about issues as they are evolving sometimes you marvel if actually these people understand what intellectualism is all about how much more being part of it so we are talking about insurgency in nigeria and everyone tend not to understand what is happening is unfortunate why do i use the one every, uh, everyone the mainstream individuals those you can easily see on the social spaces don't even know what is befalling the society they find themselves you know we have different categories of individuals in nigeria we have those people who are ignorantly educated they are educated from the context of gaining admission winding out four years or should i say winding out six years for a program that ought to have lasted for four years as a result of incessant asu strikes when they wind out that those uh, perhaps six years for a four-year program they will come out and claim they are graduates. Perhaps they start their second degree, use their money, sort out themselves, and have their masters, and do some level of psycho fancy, political psycho fan plays, and get themselves on the mainstream space. And when you see them talking about issues, 
because they know nothing they 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 have no passion for investigation they they think they can sit down somewhere and by assumption and the information that the ignorant journalists are feeding them with then you see them standing using that as a basis for 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 discussing about a development is really heartbreaking another categories of uh, individuals in nigeria are those who believe they ought to sound politically correct and these are the most gullible people you can ever think of meeting those who believe they must sound politically correct because to them they need to please the powers that be where do you see them flooded all over the society do they know what is happening absolutely they know nothing but when you see them to talk they want to tell all their discussion on the advantageous side of the government they suspend their brain their brains are on suspension they are irrational they they don't look at issue from from multifaceted points of uh, points of view they just that angle at which those who are controlling the system want them to present issue that's how they present issue and it's really saddening but to this evening we, I, I want us to really look at the insurgency in nigeria using a, a northern nigeria as a case study in fact is unavoidable case study center because uh, uh, not in Nigeria, as I speak to you, is breeding different terrorist sects or groups. Are you talking about, I see West Africa? They are hosted or they are being hosted in, uh, by Northern Nigeria. Are you talking about a Qaeda in West Africa? They are being hosted. In northern Nigeria, are you talking about Boko Haram? You get them in, in, in northern Nigeria. Are you talking about bandits? You get them. Are you talking about Fulani tribe terrorist outfit? You get them in northern Nigeria. What of those? Uh, their names are not even known yet. They are all breed in northern nigeria so northern nigeria is a a ripe case study when you want to discuss insurgency in nigeria when you want to talk about insurgency in west africa sub-region and extens extensionally at african con uh, regional level northern nigeria owns it all and what really what we want to talk about this we want to look at insurgency in northern nigeria how it has been operating and why nobody can stop it and I, when i look at people in their political correctness acts which they have sworn to maintain when I look at some people coming up with this mantra that insurgency will stop in Nigeria, I look at them and laugh. I just look at them and laugh. How can you even fight insurgency in Nigeria? And what people don't understand that is happening in northern Nigeria is that every group you see in northern Nigeria has either a top religious leader in Nigeria that is funding or supporting them. They also have some politicians that are already sitting on seat of power that is funding and is supporting them. That is how it is, it is run in northern Nigeria. So when you say you want to fight Boko Haram, you might they, some of them use the government power to fight 
perhaps let's say Boko Haram. In same time they are fighting Boko Haram, maybe the leadership of Boko Haram refused to pay loyalty to them. The same time they are funding and sponsoring another group that is loyal to them. I don't know if you if you understand the antithesis there, the contradiction there. In the same time, listen, you see, there is nothing anybody can do. Because insurgency in Nigeria is propelled by those in government. Terrorism in Nigeria is funded, supported, are enhanced, advanced by those in government. They all know this. And there is you see, when you try to, in a myopic submission, you want to believe that uh, one day it will stop. You're kidding. Take for instance, the federal government is fighting Boko Haram, or said to be fighting Boko Haram. In Kasina State, Masari, the governor of Kasina State, is in relationship with some sets. In fact, when they want to water down the, the gravity of their name, they say bandits. Casino State government is in contact and a very robust understanding with another set. Now, you come to Zamfara, Zamfara is already having rapport. There is a tea party with another set. You come to Kanu, the government of Kanu have their own loyalists. So what you have in northern Nigeria is a kind of, because these guys, I'm talking about the politicians in northern Nigeria and some top religious leaders, they have understand the importance of, you know, when you, when you allow power, that is just one of the dangerous things of allowing mentally deluded folks in power because when a man who, who does not have human face gets access to power it is worse than experiencing nazist power grief in germany i tell you so what you have in North is a kind of every sect or any every terrorist group maintains access to various governments in the North. Casino State government has those she is in control of. Zamfara State government has those she is accessible to. Same happens in Kanu. Same happens in Kaduna. And sometimes you come to some states in North, where the politicians have their own group they are controlling, the religious leaders have their own people they are also controlling. Because some of these religious leaders have these boys as the members of their mosque. These guys listening to them. So when you see this kind of thing, then you think it is something that will stop today. Never. It will be so difficult to stop because these politicians who have access to these guys understand how to use these guys as a tool for negotiation. What do I mean by tool of tool of negotiation? When good luck was there, let me give you a clear instance. Let me let me give you a clear instance and also expose our minds a bit to the the should I say the skill of negotiation and um, access provision, especially 
between state actors and non-state actors. You know, these, some of these politicians in North have realized the need to run a particular terrorist group. They have realized how juicy it is when you successfully establish a terrorist outfit. How? They have seen that whenever government wants to negotiate, whenever Nigerian government wants to reach out to whatever terrorist outfit, they always seek for what we call facilitators or good office providers. These good office providers are those people who have a sure access to these terrorist groups. Does that make sense to you? So because of these guys who have access to these groups are needed by the government. They charge government a huge amount of money in order to facilitate for dialogue or negotiation between the government and the terrorist group. So in every state of the north, every politician has already set up his own terrorist group, funding them, believing that one day, if it is not today, it will be tomorrow that the government will be interested to start negotiation. And that's why if you come to Casina today, you will hear that bandits have surrendered to the state governor. Then tomorrow you hear that there is attack in another local government. Now you begin to ask your question, yourself question, how come about that bandits surrendered their arms? and they were paid to the governor of Castina, for example, yesterday, and another place was attacked by the bandits. It is, a, it is simple. What the Castina government negotiated was a bandit under al Haji Musa, for instance. But he has not yet negotiated with bandits under the control of al Haji Tanko or maybe uh, politician A or B. So you now understand how terrorism and insurgency is now weaponized, is now commercialized in North. And that is how it's happening. And also, you should also realize that the federal government knows about this business, especially the current government. They are not naive about this. So, some of these individuals, some of these top guys in the north, you know, understand the importance of setting up in fact terrorism in the north is just like an athlete when somebody is just setting up his business center because they understand how a lot of them have been making up millions of naira and remember there's something people don't understand why terrorism will not stop and we keep on becoming a lucrative business in the north you see any government can account for any money spent. But money spent on security, there is no money spent on security that is excess expenditure. That's why the governors don't account for security vote, which runs in billions of naira. So the federal government is negotiating and pays billions of naira. It doesn't, you know, uh, proof, it, 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 it does not present threat to the government because you cannot query government why did government pay for social security? Why did government negotiate? Why? No, 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 no. They will tell you it's a security strategy. So that is exactly what is happening. And it has come to a point 
that those who are running these businesses, that those who have the intention for these businesses in North have realized that the easiest way to cash out from the government post is through setting up your own terrorist outfit. And guess what? Because they cash a lot of, they cash billions of Naira from the government of Nigeria, either at state level or national level, they now have rich money to lobby. Both the custom, both the so-called DSS, both the military, to pave way. That is what people don't understand. <laughs> it doesn't matter who is in Asharok, but those who are running this terrorist outfit in North have become so rich as a result of, you know, sometimes they, 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 they launch attack on soft targets like schools, kidnap all these people, make money from the ransom, and get huge amount of money to even pay whosoever is the control general of custom. Or should I say, uh, whosoever is leading immigration on Nigerian borders in the north, they will pay them millions of naira to give them access to get whatever they want. And remember, this officer you put in the boundary, in northern boundary, his allowances are still owned. That, in fact, people people should think most of these people you deployed as immigration officers, as custom officers, as police officers, as, as military officers, are the boundaries. Some of them, the allowances have not come to them. Some of them, their families are suffering. Then these bandits who have just collected ransom that runs to over 600 million, he comes there and tell them, my boys are coming. Either you stay off the road by taking this maybe they, they give them 10 million or we attack you and when these officers consider the fact that even the allowances are not coming they are not well fed things are not happening do you know what the officers will do they will take money and they get out of the way and the missionaries will be brought in the arms will be brought in and the insecurity will be on alarming stage and those who are stupid I call them stupid people who refuse to engage their mind because they cannot think to this point when they see some efforts by individuals to set up a defensive mechanism because the military man you expect to defend your land is already battling with a lot of, you know, is already battling with a lot of social problems. The policeman, his allowances are not coming. Then, when somebody in his kindness and wisdom decides to you know um set up set up should i call an indigenous outfit you now see some of these idiots i don't i don't really like insulting people but it's really pissing up when you see some of these animals talking you will see them yapping you just see them yapping and do you know, as I speak to you in the north, it has gotten to a point that all these individuals who have set up different terrorist outputs now sitting somewhere to, to, to be consulted as negotiators, it has gotten to a point, a dangerous point, that they have a powerful lobbying channels to the government. That is how dangerous it is. They set up these terrorist 
outfit, put to the boys in the forest, then sit somewhere in their comfortable zones and be contacting Abuja, contacting Asorok, lobbying for them to be contracted as negotiators, as a facilitators between them and this terrorist group. You know, most of us don't really understand what is happening. Recently, Shaikh Guma, uh, Gumi met some terrorist groups in, in Zamfara State. Do you know when he finished, they had a video record of their meeting, so it was not secret. He wanted the world to know. <coughs> He met the boys, had a very friendly discussions with the boys, and he decided to record whatever be um, the demise of these guys. Listen very attentively. Now, when this man came out from the forest, remember the forest is not in heaven, it's here on earth. The Air Force cannot deny knowing the geographical location through area reconnaissance. The DSS cannot deny knowing the location through intelligence gathering. Neither will any IA deny. The military cannot deny. But because of this very fact that the terrorists have would wait. A lot of these things will cause a great artifice in Nigeria. Now, when this man finished meeting these terrorists and he came out, do you know what the government did the next day? The government sent DSS to compel the man on his arrest. The government sent DSS to compel the man. Why? Have you asked yourself why? Now, Lai Mohammed said that it loose the bandits are listening to Sheikh Gumi than the government. That is what the federal, the position of the federal government. Now, the question we should ask ourselves is this: Did the man's visit to the bandits was the man's visit to the bandits done on secret? No. So, the, the issue of him working secretly to undermine Nigeria's security is no longer there because he made it open. It was not out of intelligence garden that Nigerian government knew he visited. No, he made it open. So, there is no secret plot there. Two, has there been an effort for Nigerian government to contact this man and say, okay, because, listen, because you have access to these guys, please, can we talk to them? Nigerian government never. Immediately the man visited, he never, the, the government never got interested to reach out to these people. Now, has there been cases where Nigerian government decided to use individuals or proceeds to reach out to bandits? Yes, there have been. In Kasina, Nigerian government is doing it. In Kaduna, Nigerian government is doing it. Now, what is exceptional about this man's own? The answer is not far-fetched. One, the man is seen as a critic to this current government. So for that reason, even though he becomes the father of the terrorists, his own terrorist, or sorry to say his own, rather, the terrorist group he knows can never be recognized or reached out or possibly extended with the national cake. 
that the federal government is sharing to these terrorists. I don't know if you understand me. I don't know if you understand. Because this Shaikh Gumi is a, a social critic and he has been critical about the behaviors of this current government. So the government refuses to recognize, just the way they have been doing, the government refuses to reach out to those bandits he met. That is one. Two, the man is not a Fulani, rather a Hausa man. Go and make your investigation. Shaikh Gumai is not a Fulani. So, to them, consulting this man and paying him to meet her to, to, to this guy means entrusting Nigerian money to a wrong hand, which is not Fulani hand. Quite sure he's a Muslim, but for the fact that he is not a Fulani, consulting him is baseless. And unlike Erofi, who said he knows the bandits, and the government, federal government rushed to him because he's a Fulani, of a Fulani extraction and said to him, Pay these people, let them stop killing. And Erofi came and said, They contracted me, I, I have released the money. Now, this man, an Aosama, a non Fulani in that matter, also reached out to some bandits. Instead of them to contract him just the way they have been contracting their Fulani brethren, what did they do? They first of all said to him, It looks the bandits want to listen to you than us. So, what does that show you? In not is now showing you that the business of banditry is growing, or should I say, the business of terrorism is growing in not, and on just like in Igbo business setting where you have when people have different shops in the same line, I'm trying to use this so that. The, our Biafran listeners, we understand what I'm trying to pitch and making. You know, any part of the market, any market you go and you see evil business people having same, selling same products in the same line. There's what we call Abo Sar here. Because they are selling the same products, everybody tries to reach out to the up whosoever that is coming they don't care to know if he's interested to buy if what is coming to buy is that product they will see they will see them starting looking for attention calling the person they don't care it's only when you come to close come close to them and say no i don't want to buy this i'm just passing by they will laugh and say okay no problem so in north their politicians their top religious leaders have understand the business of banditry and terrorism and everyone has set up his own what they are not doing now is Abo Sahir Abo Sahir and that's why some of them has even taken the business outside northern Nigeria some of them have taken you see, what is, is there is there is something also I would want us to know. We are discussing insurgency in Nigeria so that you understand the dimension at which it moves. If we have a chart now, we would have project how it moves. Now, also to Igbo business environment. You know when in a line, in a particular line where people are selling the same thing apart from the idea of Ibo here, you find out that the new trend sellers or dealers of those those boy we call them Momo boy anyone who comes out haven't learned the the business and he gets free from his box 
the first thing that person thinks, listening and listening attentively, is to move out of that competitive environment. If you're settled, you don't want to establish your business where the bosses are already well established and their contacts already known, where they have conquered. You, the, the newly settled young man will start looking for a new environment where his bosses and presence are not there and where he will be a king and you know decision maker of that new environment you see him trying to establish a business in a virgin environment so what is happening in the north the big boys have already finished consolidating establishing the terrorism outfit including those in Ashrock. remember when boko haram told us during good loss time that it is the boy it is Buhari that we negotiate between them and good loss government it is already it is on printed papers go and read so the big boys who is who retired generals who is who in north have already established his own group sometimes you hear that so, so many of us will be forced to ask okay if they establish why are they killing and you remember if alahaji a and alahaji b are running the same banditry business within a particular local government and the state government decides to settle alahaji a alahaji b will want to strike in that environment to prove to the state government that Alahaji A you settled is not in charge of this environment. Even though he's in charge, as you have recognized, we are still in this environment. And that is what happens. Sometimes you hear bandits will go and clear. And I'll be asking, why are they killing their fellow Muslims? It is all about the business of banditry and terrorism that is ongoing in the north. So, on another way, because of these big guys have really done a lot of takeover, they have well established. So, the upcoming ones, so many of them, like the newly settled Igbo business boy, decides to relocate. So many of them move down to southern states move with their boys logistically and intelligently position them in the forest now look at what they are doing why their boss are already in charge of negotiating with the northern government they want to now build a strong network where whosoever is kidnapped in south the government of the south if they kidnap in Ogun state now you will not see the Ogun state gov governor being under pressure from his people to do something he will not because the governor lacks the power to mobilize the police he will say the ip uh, the uh, uh, the what is it called the cp commissioner of police will tell him that he, signal has never come from aig or dig or even ig or police so the governor does not have power now because the governor does not have power to enforce police dislodging of these guys now the governor will decide to use the second approach which is he will now start looking for who is in charge of those terrorists in the bushes to negotiate for release of whosoever be their priest in so doing the governor is recognizing knowingly or unknowingly to him that in his state he shares power with the bandits operating in his state he, he might not recognize it consciously but because he is meeting somebody in his state a foreigner a stranger and paying him to release his citizen his power as a governor is already useless but he, he never knew he just existing peripher uh, uh, peripherally 
and this is what most of you see when we when we say they are not intelligent they say we insult them a lot in a state you start begging engaging somebody to release a citizen of state and you pay a state money to them you are no longer in charge of that state you have a floating power and that is the fate of most southern governors so some of these guys who now move down south because they want to be august just the way a lot of the august already you know cashing out a lot of money in the north they began to strategically move their human resources and logistics in the forest and one good thing uh, one funny thing or should i say one intelligent thing about them is that they move these things under the flag or pretense of his men you see when they attack their pre they make money out of it when the people mobilize to attack them they start shouting that they are his men does it make sense so you can now understand the state at which Nigerian security is. So you cannot also expect the governors to do much because they are not in charge of the security of their states. For a governor to order the CP, that means the governor has to call the IG. Maybe put something in the envelope for the IG then the IG will now call the CP, the Commissioner of Police, in his state and say, please listen to him. Do you see how? And sometimes even the so-called bandits owners, those who are controlling these bandits, pay their loyalty to people with the orgas at the top. Do you understand me? They pay their loyalty on monthly. The governor only remembers the IG when his state is under distress. But some of these guys are paying their returns on monthly and weekly basis. So sometimes when the governor say, uh, we know we know where these guys is, they're in our forest also place. CP moves, CP we call IG, forget, uh, forget, he's making a silly noise. And they laugh on phone. So you can now understand the importance of the linking from the governorship structure as a yastic for protection of life and security in our land to an indigenous structure that is devoid of Abuja control. Every single thing you see that the southwestern governors are suffering is because of the fact that they cannot control the commissioner of police of their states. And they know that. In fact, some of them might not tell you, you know, some of them might not even tell you this. Some of them get insulted and bullied on phone. Some of these governors, they won't tell you everything and open. They get shouted down at. And they will cowardly rush to press and say, everybody should calm down. We're on top of the matter. And grammar. Yes. So, now that people have begun, thank God for Mazen Namdekan who ignited that consciousness and they boosted. It doesn't matter what the animals are talking. But the truth is this, we know that Namdi Kano has achieved a vicious circle revolution as a result of not his today's action, people should understand, but as a result of his consistency in telling people the truth. So you cannot see, ask yourself a simple question, why is it? that now there is 
a serious attempt for the indigenous people to defend their land. Why is the government panicking? Why is the government not thinking of reaching out this idea? The answer is simple. Those in government are sharing and enjoying from the insecurity structure. Like, for instance, it is not in Nigeria. What is happening? The formation of ESN, Eastern Security Network, Amoteku, and even Sunday Boho attempts is not absolute in Nigeria. When people tell you it's absolute in Nigeria, they know nothing. That's why you should. These critics should just read for crying out loud. They should just do basic informa uh, information. When I see was in Syria, go and make research. They almost overwhelmed Syrian government. Do you know what Syrian government did? They allow indigenous formation of defense structures. If you come to um, uh, what is Kurdish in Syria, those Kurdish people live, uh, of Syrian uh, uh, country, the Kurdish people formed the indigenous security against ISIL, and they, they will start. They will stood them. When Al Qaeda was rampaging Iraq, the Kurdish in Iraq formed what we call Peshmerga. Go and make research. They form. They move out from the central security architecture because it has collapsed. It collapsed just the way. Central security architecture, architecture in Nigeria has collapsed. What the Kurdish people in Iraq did was to form what we call Peshmerga. They formed the indigenous, purely Kurdish people formation in Iraq. And they fought Al Qaeda. And the United States applauded them for such wise step. Also in Syria, Donald Trump's government applauded the Kurdish people in Syria for forming indigenous security network just the way IPOB has done because Nigeria's security architecture has collapsed because these those who are cashing millions of naira from the terror, terrorism and banditry have successfully penetrated Nigeria security architecture they have infiltrated in fact, most of them are already enjoying intelligence information than even those officers in this security apparatus. Some of these bandits and terror are already having a first class information than even so called uh, officers who are every day you see them. And we are we are soldiers. We are police of Nigeria, Federal Republic. Of, they're not even they know absolutely nothing. Bandits are now well informed with the internal and secret classified business of the government than those who ought to have known. So in such situation, the central pol uh, policing system is gone. And you should understand, as is always said, necessity is the mother of invention when there is necessity there's always brain child is a necessity is a brain child of invention so what we are seeing happening in nigeria is a work on development indigenous security system is a work on development any idiot can stand against it any idiot can speak grammar what is most important that under his wife's pillowcase he's thanking the evolution of such indigenous security. That is one thing that shocks me with those in the class of political correctness or so called, uh, should I say, intellectuals. They are admiring, they like a system, but because of how they have committed, how they have soiled so their hands. They will never come openly and give credence or support to what they know is of beneficiary to them. And that is the hypocrisy of life. So those of us who are bold should remain on our feet. Very, very important. Because 
we are created specially to save ourselves and save the idiots. That is just the way it is. If you're not created for it, there's nothing you can do about it. Do you think it's comfortable for Mazenam de Kanu to be under such mental heavy weight? Do you know the pressure he passes every day? Do you know calls that are coming? Do you know appraisals he gets? Do you know thanks that he gets? Do you know blames that comes to him? You know, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, if you're not created, you cannot survive it. Just imagine, for instance, you ask people to, to come, out, come out on protest, and unfortunately, Nigerian police in their animalistic behavior decide to mow down a lot of people. You need to be an extraordinary human being to survive the pressure because at that time, a lot of people, including, you know, it's only Namdekanu will tell you what he's passing through. At that time, some governors even call him privately and say, you see how you're wasting the lives of our people. If you're not created for this, if you're not mentally strong, you will just give up. And that's why sometimes I don't blame some of these guys who give up. They are not just into this before. They are not into this act of divine nominations. They are just here. Some of them got uh, into top IPOB through gossips. Some of them got into it through noise making. And when trials and temptation came, you see them, they fizzle out. They became more stupid than they were, became more useless than they were. So what are we trying to say? The indigenous security formation is a work on development. It's a work on development because Nigeria's system has collapsed. Forget the attempts, efforts of the likes of, uh, should I call, should I say, Ndizuzu, you see in BBC Ibu those bunch of idiots whose nature is even shaming me that people cannot just imagine just imagine a Jew working for Nazis that's just how I see it but because I don't blame them anyways to an extent when there is high joblessness in the land and somebody is paying you good pounds or naira but on a high value as of those in UK if you don't have if you don't have the courage somebody is paying you high to keep insulting your people you will do that after Nazis contracted some Jews some Jews were used to gas their people that make research in Poland. The concentration concentra, uh, uh, concentration camp in Poland in Warsaw. Some Jews we are used. Some Jews also volunteer them, themselves voluntarily to sabotage their own people. Go and study about the Holocaust. Then you will not be wondering when you see um, perhaps any woman working assiduously to sabotage you will not bother yourself because from historical perspective it's not new so i want to thank every single one of us for joining us this evening i think we have done um this is uh, an hour discussion thank you for joining us and remember if you join in destroying Eastern Security Network, which can never happen. You have consciously or unconsciously endorsed for the fate of Hausas. You know what Hausas are suffering today? The same thing Hausa people are suffering is what your children will suffer in few years to come. So you must say no to attempt to be used to destroy the only defensive 
front you have. From here, I want to say good night and do enjoy yourself. <clears throat> okay. Um. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Depends where you are joining us from. I'm Mazichika Austin, and um, we are here once again to. continue our analysis especially as it regards to the ongoing um, developments and uh, one of those things we really want to point out is um, the issue of cow business we are going to make a comparative analysis uh, this evening uh, trying to look at cow in Nigeria or cow so-called a cow rearing in Nigeria whether it's a blessing or a cause very very important and it's very very important to also remind us that uh, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mazen, and the Kalu, will be addressing the world tomorrow by 7 p.m. So very, very important. We take a date. And also, we I think I, I will also use this noble uh, moment to indeed condemn the endless efforts by Facebook to suppress our voice simply because we choose the part of decency and uh, speaking out against an attempt, orchestrated attempt to destroy a people. So what Facebook, the action of Facebook in regards to the limiting of Mazen Namdekano's Facebook page to audience is really, really inhuman, I must say. And we are really in the stage of the world where we are now seeing a very clear, um, should I say, a, a very clear outplay of some actors trying to decide trying to control trying to put up a psychological trauma or bullying on their fellow humans simply because what they defined as a norm is not being followed and when you look at whatever be their norms, it negates integrity. It negates just cause. And above all, it negates freedom. So the action of Facebook is totally condemned. And <clears throat> I think it is hard time Facebook understand that Mazinam de Kanu has taken the part of boldness, which is not common within African sub-region, sorry, African region and the West Africa sub-region. So he must be commended for standing so bold to speak for his people, who are psychologically and in vicious circle bullied into submission so his bold step to rekindle the mindset of his people should be commended and not being um you know confronted with all source of state and non-state sponsored harassments and intimidation so i totally condemn the decision of uh, Facebook. So, on that note, having said that, uh, we we proceed we proceed to 
the discussion of this moment we seriously proceed to the discussion of this moment which uh, we are going to look i think it's better we share this program because i i really want to use this program to educate every single nigerian to educate especially those in astro because having done my analysis sorry having done my investigations my research um without owing anybody apology i want to say that nigerian leaders are the worst thing that has ever happened to humanity because what my result is showing me having taken time to do a lot of investigation as regards to what i describe as cow nomies, the economies of cow rearing the economies of cow business i came to realize that nigeria leaders whosoever have been at the helm of agricultural initiatives and policy formulation in nigeria they are totally brain dead i must say this they are pure disgrace because what i find out from my research is really really heartbreaking um nigeria is never a giant of africa and anyone that possess such is worth causing because if what is before me the evidence is before me haven't gone on on extensive research if what is before me i'm talking about the results before me are very difficult to apply in nigeria then believe you me there is no leader in terms of rational definition of the word leadership absolutely there is no leadership in nigeria so first of all let me build this ground with um this understanding that people keep on hearing cow headers fulani cow headers crisis cow farmers madness and all this do you know that nigeria is not among the uh, the, the the first 10 cow producing nations i repeat nigeria is not among the 10 when you look at the documentations if you look at the global cow inventory or inventories so to say nigeria is not among the 10 cow producing nations of the earth now you ask yourself a question how come about a country that is not even leading in this product how come we are talking about agronomies we are talking specifically about agriculture we are talking about specifically about cow so that you understand all this nonsense that cow in Nigeria is a weapon instead of economic benefit. And that is what we are going to see. Because cow to the rest 13 leading nations or countries that are producing cow, that are doing well in terms of being ahead of nigeria in cow production you cannot see this stupid and uh, useless things you are hearing happening in nigeria you cannot find it take for instance brazil is the leading cow producing nation because the brazil cow population stands about uh, 211 million cows which is if you convert it to the total global cow which is 1.468 billion. The, the, uh, the total number of cows on the earth is about 1.468 billion. And Brazil only is producing 14.33% of that population, which if you convert it on, uh, on figures, it stands at 211 million cows that is rising for you and you don't hear about headers farmers crisis in brazil 
a country that is leading in cow production. And for your information, for those of us who don't, who might not really be well acquainted with Brazil, Brazil is not a developed nation. Rather, Brazil is a developing nation. Just like Nigeria. But how come about Brazil that is the highest producer of cow? According to international inventories. How come about that same Brazil is not experiencing the issue of cows for the sake of cows losing a lot of brazilians lives how come about is it that angels are managing the the cow business in brazil another country apart from brazil is india the second cow producing nation have you heard about headers farmers or community host community and uh, india headers crisis have you heard that indians were killed because as i speak speak to you india cow production stands at 1 million 89000 cows uh, sorry 189 million cows i mean to say we stand at 12.88% of the total global car production. And yet in India, you cannot hear the madness. What of China? They thought car producing. What of USA? Now, let's okay, walk out of other continents. Let's come to Africa for our case study. In Africa, you have the highest for its sorry, I think uh, so sorry for that obstruction. So let's come to Africa for instance, because we've just talked about outside Africa. Are you aware that in Africa, Nigeria is not even the highest cow producing country? The highest is Ethiopia. And what do you see in Ethiopia? Nigeria is not even the second rating, or sorry, or second in terms of rating. You, you see Sudan. Then after Sudan, you see Tanzania. But you cannot hear this, you know, these things you are hearing in Nigeria, in all these countries. I must tell you this. You can never. So let's look at some of these countries in Africa, how their cow business have been run. Which Nigerian government refused to copy or deliberately refused to buy the idea and if Nigerian government refused to embed such system, such workable system in their cow sector, then the question that best for an answer is that what is the reason why such ideas, such workable, workable ideas that are obtainable in Ethiopia, in Tanzania, why do the federal government refuse to implement or borrow such workable ideas within her agro policy as regards to cow management. If there is deliberate attempt, refusal to implement such or to import such workable idea, then what you need to understand is that what cow business means to these countries, Ethiopia, Tanzania, and all the rest of them is not what it means to Nigerian government because this is what calls for deeper investigations because we have seen cases where Nigeria have been busy borrowing idea 
We've seen where Nigeria have been asking for exchange of studies. Where Nigeria have been asking for exchange of expertise. But why is it that what is of utmost disturbances, you know, something that have been creating a, a, a national fireworks, why is it that the government refuses to look into Tanzania, look at how Tanzania have managed their own, go to Ethiopia, look at how Ethiopia has managed their dairy sector and import it? Why? Who is actually blocking the importation of those good ideas? I ask. Very, very important. Who actually is blocking the importation of those workable ideas? And somebody might even ask, or somebody might say, which I think I subscribe to it. Apart from the borrowing of these ideas, Nigeria has too many universities of agriculture. Go and find out. Too many universities of agriculture and i believe if you look at some of the theses that are being written by the under uh, by uh, postgraduate students of these universities or the project works that are being done by the, uh, the the graduating students you will find a sellable and perfect ideas you know when you go to some of these uh, schools of agriculture, universities of agriculture, college of agriculture, you will find out that there are a lot of projects, there are a lot of theses that have been written, were researched for better way to manage the cow crisis, or should I say, the rampaging of Fulani Hesman. But the federal government will never buy that idea. So if someone is opposing that idea, if somebody is not inculcating that idea at the mainstream of policy initiative, then the question we have to ask ourselves, is this cow not for economic purpose or is it a channel that someone wants to achieve his sinister intentions this is this you know this is what analysis is all, is all about we analyze so that you can see different possibilities because if actually nigeria like if if you if you look at some of these countries we mentioned for instance in in tanzania cow sector contributes over 44 percent of her gdp in tanzania if you go to tanzania tanzania does what we call diary or cow business value chain maximization they look at cow business they they understand that it is not all about the beef they look at other things they can tap harness and for that reason, they start from what we call domestication. This Tanzania, Tanzania, I'm telling you, is not in Europe. It's not in the United States. It's just a close-by African nation. What did they start from? They start from the, the first initiative this, they, they, they activated was ranching. And what is ranching? Because remember the reason why you ranch or the reason why the concept of ranching of a cow is ideal is this. When a cow is ranched, listen, you control what that cow is. That is the first thing. When you domesticate, permit me to use that word, when you ranch, that cow does not pick whatever she miss on the way just the way just the way you see 
over ninety nine percent of Nigeria of uh, cows you are eating in Nigeria are what they take are not controlled, and that's why, <laughs> in fact, is even another poison that people are just eating. Because in ranching, you limit the movement of the cow, then you supply the cow what to eat, and at the level of getting what the cow we eat you have made sure that whatever is going into the cow system is well vetted. that is one another way of ranching is this but when you domesticate when you ranch you can critically monitor the cow's behavior also take a medical record of those cows and treatment is easy to apply because they are already on the ranch you can easily go there vet vet the cows and give them the ideal and proper treatments but in the case of nigeria all cows are in the bush is it the veterinary that we trick for four hours in the thick forest to attend to those cows And what we are, we are talking is issue that every responsible government should look into it because when you don't care about what kind of food your people are eating, then that means you don't even care. The, the people are just animals before you. Because you vet in order to, as in you ranch in order to take a proper health records of those animals which are going to turn into meal for your citizens. But all the cows in Nigeria are just in the bushes. Who treats them? Who administers medications? Who even vet at the point of killing? And do not tell me you have leaders who are thinking in this part of the world you know when they tell you they are they that the after protection of lives and property in nigeria those things are fallacy apart from the should i say the conventional security system which we know as police or army man standing on checkpoint protecting a place something like that nigeria government does not even care what kind of meats are her citizens consuming? Are those proteins, are those meats that are being gotten from these cows, are these cows well treated? And the answer is no, because who, where will, who will go to the forest to, to treat? And that's why you see all manners of diseases and health challenges in this part of the world. So another reason why you ranch, listen, why we are saying this so that people should understand that Nigerian government is not responsible government. Absolutely is not responsible government. Now, another way or another reason why you should ranch at least to encourage studies on this side of life if i'm studying livestock in the universities for instance please just follow so that you understand that you see when people come up and um, they just want to talk you sometimes when you make a critical observations of how they think their iq you just you just wonder if they are aliens from a lower planet do you know if i'm studying livestock in the university i need to visit a ranch to 
take a psychological understudy of cows, for instance, if I develop interest on cow as a livestock interest area. And where will I meet the cows to have my practicals? I need to meet them where you have cluster, cow clusters, ranch. It's only when you visit there, perhaps, start studying. You can now make advanced postulations from the existing theories that have been established. And in so doing, there is what we call mental expansion on that part of life or that side of life. But tell me any student of agricultural science that have interest to study on diaries or cow, whatever. Tell me whether he will go to the Fulani Hesman in the bush to study there, to have his or her practicals. So you can understand that when some countries are not taking Nigeria serious, it's because the government is not serious. There is no control in this part of the world. You don't expect me to be politically correct, because I will never. But the truth remains, you are not taken serious as an engineer because even the minor sector, I mean, a, min a minor sector of human endeavor that even smaller countries are wonderfully managing. Nigeria is still running headers farmers crisis in 21st century. And not even a crisis at lower level. This is a crisis that is taking a serious international outlook. The world is just watching. It is almost blowing up everywhere. And when somebody says that Nigeria is a zoo, you will see some, should I call them, flipping urchins. They flip, yes. Very inconsistent. You see them coming out from their holes because they they want to be politically correct no doesn't work that way if brazil that has over 211 million cows is not recording crisis and nigeria that has only 20 million cows is just watching communities are raised down because of cows Set, uh, communities are evacuated because of cows. Some states are already, you know, made redundant because of cow. Just a country that is that that has in her inventory twenty million cows. Then Brazil that has two hundred and eleven million should have been on flame, or India that has one hundred and eighty nine million. Should have been on a flare, been on flare. Or Tanzania that has 24 million cows. Tanzania would have been a forgotten nation. So that is why if you have a critical look on Nigerian cow business, you will understand that what is happening in Nigeria cow normies, what I call cow normies, is not really economic interest. It is more of the interest of conquistadors than economic. The government knows about it, that her interest in Nigeria cow business is not economy, rather a advance of a sinister intentions. And that is 
what we are going to talk here. If Tanzania is having her 44 percent, as in having 44 percent of her GDP coming from dairy, from cow business, are you not telling me that Nigeria cannot do better? Are you not telling me that Tanzania that is operating ranching, Tanzania that is producing exceedingly great in terms of milks. Are you not telling me that Nigeria cannot borrow a wing? And come to the true real sense of it. Why is it that Nigeria government is not looking on revenue maximization from cow sector? which can only be achieved when the cows are ranched because when you ranch you start milk tapping you start tapping mix why is it that you see that is why the truth remains that the government knows what she's doing that is the truth the government is not interested in making money from the cow what they are just interested is making or advancing their intent. And what is that their intent? The fulanization intents. It's as simple as that. Anybody can claim whatever he or she wants to claim. It's just obvious. It is just obvious. So just imagine a country like Tanzania looking at what is happening in Nigeria. Just imagine a country like Ethiopia, Kenya, countries like Uganda. Uganda at least has a reasonable uh, cow inventory. Uganda have about 13 million cows. What? Nigeria just toppled Uganda with 7 million. Uganda has a very reasonable number of cows. But you can't hear this nonsense. So that is to tell you that there is something the government knows that they don't want to tell us. Because if they cannot encourage advancement and the more development of cow sector rather than opening their mouths to say to people that it's better to release the ancestral land than to be killed now that is tell you the kind of leaders you have just watch the way they think because no society will be greater than the leadership in that society is as simple as that no society will be greater than the leadership. How the leadership thinks is a very strong determinant factor of how far that society can go. In as much as Nigeria government in 21st century is endorsing the elimination of her citizens in place of cow, then forget this is not a country. And for information, you know, so many of us always want to, some of us always want to sound political, politically correct. You cannot be viewed more than your country leadership. That's why a lot of our professors are still messed up. On the embassy, they are professors, no doubt about it. But in as much as they have green passport, the world subject them like animals. Why? Because the world knows that than whom cows are more preferred than them. Do you hear the one that happened in Edo that came back from US? A widely read man and he was kidnapped by the so-called uh, Fulani headers and killed. So the world understands that cows are more valued than you if you like 
claim to be this, claim to be that, before the eyes of the world. The world knows because the, 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 the what, what is it called? The em, em, ambassadors of in these countries are taking note and they are reporting their home country. Yes, they keep returning information to their home country that these people down home can be wiped out for cows to be settled. Uh, and they might not be bold to call you less than cows, but there are no other ways to make you understand that in your home, you are not better than cows, because that is the level the government has reduced an average Nigerian. Yes, no matter how you pretend about it. No matter how you pretend about it. A simple way you know it. If you're coming and you're killed, you know, if you are killed, for instance, if you're killed by this headers government doesn't say much you are forgotten but any day there is a reaction and your people killed one car the next day you hear the government speaking you understand me so you cannot see how it works you cannot see how degraded, how less human you appear before this government. So if government is not interested on development, and sometimes you hear things like Ruga and all this, Ruga and all this. Just how do you tell me that a state like Niger State that is even larger than most, some as a, larger than three states in East put together. How can you tell me that Ruga is better in a state like Ibo, for instance, that have a very limited land mass, then is not good to be established in Niger, that you have vast lands that nobody is using? There's another question to ask. Are you not telling me that the government cannot look? You see, because they try to tell you, uh, uh, okay, now that you're chasing, uh, you're, 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 now that you're not defending yourself against this madness of these headers, can we now consider giving them Ruga? And the question I want to ask, if you look at places like Adamawa, look at places like Sokoto, you now find out that you have a lot of Western land spaces. Why is it? What is most much interested in having Ruga established in areas that don't even have land for? Much land for human inhabitation, how much more? These are questions nobody's asking. These are questions nobody's asking. So, from all indication, because if you see what is happening in Tanzania, Tanzania is more richer than Nigeria in terms of cow inventory. Same applies to Ethiopia. And all these countries who have not had in any way that a Tanzanian was killed by headers. In Ethiopia, we have not also had such news. But Nigeria that has just only how many? 20 million cows against these con countries I mentioned. Brazil has 211 point something million cows. And they are not making noise. You can't hear all this, this and that. 
In fact, their country, their, their sector is running naturally on its own. Nobody hears up. If we've not, if most of us don't know that Brazil you're seeing produces over 14.43% of the global cow inventory. That is just the way it is. Brazil alone. The number of cows in Brazil is higher than the number of humans in Nigeria. Does that shock you? you the total number of humans in Nigeria is about, I think, 200 million. But in Brazil, you have 211.7 million cows. So what does it in, uh, show you? The number of humans you have in Nigeria is less than the number of cows you have in Brazil. Yet, you've not heard in any day that cow more than a, a bicycle rider in Brazil. You've not heard any day that cows, for the sake of cows, a community or a settlement was cleared in Brazil. You never heard that. And only a country with uh, just 20 million cows is just disturbing international peace. In fact, <laughs> trying to, should I say, trying to even evacuate her people out of a land just to make sure the cows are established. Isn't that funny? Facebook is really busy <laughs> dropping viewers. We understand all this and we are not going to give up anyway. So uh, they can do their worst. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't remove anything from us. So what are we trying to say? It is hard time we understand that in as much as the government of Nigeria in 21st century when countries are contending, listen, when countries are contending for space, when countries are contending for their position in Authentica, when countries are contending for space, space on space, Nigeria is still talking about cow versus their citizens and you tell me this is a country countries are talking about getting rid of a lot of things walking away from fossil energy going to green energy countries are talking about what ought to be discussed in 21st century nigeria is discussing in 21st century what ancient man never discussed in his age because ancient man even during his own time had what we call animal husbandry they did settlement they settled they domesticated i'm talking about people who were here 5000 years ago before now they never even had this issue and in 21st century when countries are talking about green energy countries are not talking about advanced agro techs and agro value chains nigeria is still talking about give them the ancestral land or you lose your life that is the government for you and do not tell me to identify with such entity no 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 it doesn't work that way you not tell me to believe that this is a country. And supposedly you also believe that I should proudly have keys in such environment. It doesn't work that way. Anyone who thinks otherwise is just a bunch of hypocrites and pretend, pretender. So if federal government has choosing not to borrow idea from Tanzania, Ethiopia, and other countries, then there is something they are not telling us. And that thing they are not telling us, we keep on 
raising national tension to a point that it will be so difficult for them to manage. Because if in the spirit of sister, uh, sisterhood, considering the fact that Ethiopia is in Africa, Tanzania is in Africa, and they could not go to these countries to borrow idea how they solved or how they averted this kind of menace, then there is something they are not telling us. And believe you me, it doesn't matter how they pretend. Surely one day they will tell us. So what are we trying to say? Or what is our submission here? Our submission is that Nigeria cows are not for economic purpose. It's a tool of advancing philanization agenda. It's as simple as that. Until we are proving otherwise, until the government of Nigeria decides by practical exhibitions that it is not true, then we will know. Until they prove to us by actions that the car business in Nigeria is for economy and not weaponized, then we keep on maintaining our position that cow rearing in Nigeria or cow business is a sole aim of advancing fulanization. And from there we come to the end of today's discussion. And remember we keep coming. Facebook tries as much as possible to suppress viewers. But they should understand that it does not discourage us. We keep moving. Yes, we keep moving. So stay safe and do enjoy your moment. First, um, I am Mazichika Austin, and um, we are here once again this evening, uh, which might be morning or afternoon in your own location. And uh, <clears throat> we want to look at a very um, developing issue very very developing issue as regards to uh, issues that have been unfolding since the launching of um, Eastern Security Network and the things we need to know very very important there are things we need to know as a people this is the time of knowing this is not just the time of believing only but most important this is the time of knowing because what you know is greater than what you believe and that's why it's important we let you understand on our uh, personal analysis of things that unfolding so that you understand why this happens and why this does not happen very very important and also i would want us to share this program as much as we can before we move because we must definitely continue Eastern Security Network has really, um, you know, has really, really been attracting a lot of discourses. Discourses from every front, from the good, from the bad, and from the ugly, we must know. But this evening we are going to definitely do a dissection, surgical analysis of various reactions we are seeing very very important so that people should stop being fooled around so that people should understand the kind of government they have in this part of the world so that people should stop being myopic and people should stop entrusting their sense of reasoning on those they are better than 
but you think those people you're listening to are better than you because they have government sponsorship to control opinions and this is exactly what we are going to analyze this evening most individuals you you have entrusted your sense of reasoning you have been expecting to lead the pathway of rationalism when you see them talk you get you know perplexed how come about people of this social magnitudes are not even thinking like humans how much more to say they are not thinking intelligently and that's exactly what we are going to analyze this moment if you look at the topic we raise this evening on your gadget screen we said eastern security network what the federal government is afraid is power equilibrium it's not all about the safety of nigerian people that should sink in you we are going to you see this evening this this evening this session is going to be a terrible one to those who believe they can just play games with our lives with our sense of reasoning we are really going to prove them wrong after this evening's uh, analysis so that you understand the caliber of persons and it's very very important people should understand when you talk the word, when you use the word government government simply means the composition of various individuals so if someone is a sponsor of terrorist and he finds himself in the government you don't expect him to disassociate from the terrorist his sponsors that is that is where we get it wrong especially in africa at the at african regional politics or regional power uh, management system we don't vet because we don't vet that's why we keep on having the shocks of our lives people don't think because you should understand that you cannot separate yesterday with today Neither will you separate the activities of today with tomorrow. They are all interconnected. They are all interlinked. And that's why, because we refuse to embrace, because we refuse to look back to antecedents, that's why one idiot who is notoriously known as being sympathetic to murderers, to rapists, to terrorists, because he finds himself on the corridor of power, we now forget his antecedents. We now forget the statements he made in the past. And we are being fooled around. That's why sometimes we, I, I, I subscribe to those who ask questions if blacks are indeed humans, especially blacks of uh, Nigeria extraction, because people don't think how do you expect okay let me give you a clear instance on a broader perspective or broadening broadened perspective so to say if you go to lebanon currently that is where i really want us to look at if you come to lebanon we have hezibwala before the west the eyes of the western nations hezbollah government uh, hezbollah is a terrorist organization but do you know in the same lebanon or lebanon hezbollah is a part of lebanese government go and find your research if you come to lebanese parliament you see some members of Hezbollah. Now, will you tell the Western nations because members of Hezbollah are part of the government of Lebanon, will you not tell the Western nations to see those ones who joined the government of Lebanon to be less terrorist? 
than those of them who are also members of his Bwala, but in Syria fighting. I don't know if you have one I repeat, if you come to his uh, Lebanon, for those of us who are staying in Middle East, take a research on this. You find out that in Lebanese government, you see members of Hezbollah, they are members of the Lebanese parliament. And in the eyes of Western nations, Hezbollah is a terrorist organization. Are you not going to tell the Western nations because this Hezbollah member is not part of Lebanese government? He is not better than those of Hezbollah that, fight, that are fighting in Syria. Such a thing does not happen. So it is those who sympathize terrorism in the past in Nigeria. Somehow they find themselves in Nigerian government. And so some, some many of us in our myopic way of thinking believe they are already disassociated with terrorism. No! What you only have is what we call advanced stage. Because when terrorists take over government, they have a higher edge. They have a higher advantage. Higher channel of assessing equipments and sensitive information. And for information, that is exactly what happened in Nigeria. I must tell you, that is the current state Nigeria is. In the government, you have high sympathizers, sponsors of terrorism. So many of them are sponsoring or sympathizing on religious ground. Others are sympathizing or for, uh, sponsoring on should I say jihadist, which is also religion, or hatred, or con you know, uh, conquistador's mindset, the mindset, you know, uh, ethnic or racial mindset, who believe that we just have to sp support terrorism on others because we need our own ethnic composition to take up our hand. And these are realities on ground. But the truth is that people, even the so-called intellectuals, when you see some of them speaking on dailies, you marvel if something has happened to their brains. Now, let's come back. Because if you follow the title of this evening's discussion, I said Eastern Security Network. Government is not, Nigerian government is not mindful of the safety of Nigerians. What they are, mind, what they are afraid of is power equilibrium and why did i say that it is not an argument to state here that the fulanese have penetrated the seat of power they have consolidated the seat of power they have strategically positioned themselves on the hem of affairs thereby believing listen that with the instrumentality of the government, forget any southern politician who is a, who is scared to recognize what, we, what I'm talking about here. Just forget them. Most of them are under a psychological bully. Too many of them cannot speak. They know the truth, but they don't have the temerity to talk. They don't have the boldness to speak. They know the truth of what I am going to say, but they dare not say it because of what they have committed themselves into. I tell you, they have soiled their hands, they are so indicted that they can never speak the truth publicly. And some of them choose to speak the truth in their bedrooms. So it's really shocking. Now, let me now tell you something that is happening in Nigeria. Let me now um, tell us the state at which we are. As it stands, or as it currently stands in Nigeria, 
The Fulanis have consolidated power. No, we about it. They are in all positions of military and paramilitary organizations or agencies of Nigerian government, which simply means they can, through the instrumentality of the government, through the tool of the government, they can control and penetrate anywhere they want. In fact, they did it in a way that if they have their way militarily and the people revolt, listen and so that you understand what we're talking about. They did it, did it in a way that if they use the DSS, use the police, use the army and bully your leaders and you people decide to revolt, listen, so that you understand what I'm talking about. They have so consolidated in a way that if they use the army, use the police, use the DSS and under other paramilitaries, which they have positioned their own people, that if they use this instrument, instruments of the government to bully your leaders, those you expected to speak to you, if they use these agencies to intimidate them, and you and I decide to revolt because your leader that, have been, that, that is under intimidation, harassment, cannot speak. And out of anger, you say, okay, we're going to vote him out. Do you know where they are waiting for you? They will now use judicial system to tell that your leader, which they have bullied, that is not doing their will, that he shouldn't mind you because you are vote does not count already they have the eye neck it doesn't matter who whom you vote for they have the eye neck to bring the candidate of their choice and if that does not happen they use judiciary to rubbish whatever you think so with this let down illegal and lawless channels they have built for themselves and of course lawless behavior rascal behavior they have decided to go by it will be so difficult for any power hung uh, any power testy individual from south to hope on the people to deliver him it's not possible it's only a fool or a foolish satana will believe that he can politically stand against the Fulanese and have his way. Because they have built a structure where they can frustrate anything if they wish. And I know some of us will say, what of the lies of Abaribe the people stood for? In the case of Abaribe, Abaribe case was exceptional because they understood how dangerous it's going to be to remove Abaribe and how that will be a clear indication that they are attacking Abaribe for his support from Azenam the Khan or for his uh, standing for his shorty. So they left him to his fate. Now, because they have done all these things, listen. You see, when people, I repeat myself, when people t talk, sometimes you wonder if they reason in the true sense of the word. Now, having done all these things, listen, you know, having taken hold of all these things mentioned, the military, the DSS, the police, in fact, they told you that despite this expiration of the outgoing IG, that they are not going to consider federal character in nominating his successor. They told you to your face and nothing you can do about it. So, haven't consolidated, haven't, you know, taken charge, haven't built all this foundation, haven't been in charge of government. Do you know what they did? They now realize that Power 
especially within the confraternity of democracy is unpredictable. See, they have taken charge of government agencies. They have done everything to consolidate, it, to consolidate their agenda, which is conquering others. But they now came up and noticed that it might be so difficult for them to achieve this flanization, to achieve this conquering of others. Do you know what they did? Because you understand that the international community might not overlook the other way to see the army killing people. Like you can see what is happening in ISIS International Criminal Court versus Nigerian Army. So they believe that the, 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 the conventional system, international system, might not watch them using the state security apparatus to conquer order, that the world might not fold their hand. It will attract interest parties in the world because of how international politics is run. Do you know what these guys did? What they did, they started creating aside government structures, aside government structure of conquest. And that is all we are going to explain. Because they understand that in the military, listen, that there is no how you will have homogeneous military. It's practically impossible. People of other ethnic group might indicate interest. And because the, the constitution allows them to enter within the military, the military will not enjoy 100% secrecy. They would have want the military to enjoy. They understand that the DSS can never be a homogeneous entity. So is the police. So because of the concept of federal character, because of the concept of other people indicating interest, the Fulanis understand the porosity of launching their Fulanization with solemnly the government apparatus. They understand that it's not going to be possible. There will be insurrections because those non-Fulanis in these agencies we definitely ask questions why are you using us to oppress our people so they understand that there is no how to achieve absolute ground within the government do you know what they did they started creating non-governmental structures and what is this non-governmental structure they started moving out of any heterogeneous outlook into pure homogeneous outlook and how did they achieve that they achieved that by floating not even arewa platform because they know in arewa umbrella you will see the nupe you will see the biron you will see others that are not full of needs within the arewa circle but the Fulanis don't want a heterogeneous composition in advancing the Fulanization project. What did they do? They downplayed, they decommissioned, they watered down the efficacy of Arewanism and floated Mieti Allah, which is only group that does not this spider is a northern group. It does not accommodate non Fulani. Go and make your research. Mieti Allah, despite is of northern extraction, does not in any way accommodate non Fulani as a member. So, what do they want to achieve? They want to build up a homogeneous front ahead of what they are planning and immediately Mieti Allah started first of all in order to discourage other non-Fulani northerners from joining because they know that 
non fulani not nothing else might indicate interest eventually to join me later in order to discourage and disqualify them from joining this homogeneous conquistadors platform they made it explicitly for cattle rearers because they know that this is specifically the business of the full animal which is cattle rearing and guess what Mieti Allah was planned and is as a done deal and the government began to market Mieti Allah so if Mieti Allah is a terrorist group or headers Fulani headers, according to what terrorist index. Remember, the government of Nigeria is in friendship with this internationally recognized terrorist outfit. So they now formed a unique platform where you cannot see an Hausa man, where you cannot see Biron man, where you cannot see Nupe man, because they want every information about conquering order that is shared within the FUBE platform to remain intact, not to be leaked. And guess what? What your government did, listen, so that you listen, what the federal government, full and control federal government did was to make sure that Mieti Allah is not just nationalized as in is not just brought at national level but is meant to be the vocal social cultural group so to say thereby becoming a power influencing group more than the existing ones like ohaneze afenifere and arewa consecutive forum that is what most of you don't know how did the federal government achieve that the federal government achieved the mainstreaming of Mieti Allah by one reason or too many reasons but let me highlight that one in order to make this homogeneous organization which is Mieti Allah to be a power breaker or power broker what the government did was to loan their voices to Mieti Allah and in case you forget whenever there is headers or terrorist attack by the Fulanis in Southwest listen the federal government will tell Mieti Allah, not even federal government to negotiate. Because federal government understand the importance of promoting Mieti Allah so that whether you like it or not, it will be a greater platform than Ohaneze, Afenifere, and even Arewa consecutive forum. So whenever there is problem in Southwest or Yoruba land, the federal government will advise Mieti Allah to go and discuss with the elected officials of the people. So imagine an international recognized terrorist outfit sitting on the same platform with your representative and giving them order of what must be implemented. If there is a problem in, uh, in so-called South-South or Niger Delta, they will send Mieti Allah to discuss with the governors. And imagine the governors will be sitting with Mieti Allah delegates and they will be telling the governors what they will do. And the same applies to Southeast. Same applies to North Central. So by the time every region is in discussion with Mieti Allah, what does that imply? It shows that Mieti Allah is not the central power mover because he's in discussion with this region is discussion in discussion with this region is discussion in, with this region and thereby 
making them an inevitable power that you cannot do without. And that is how they started as certain authority, giving orders to uh, the likes of Ohanese, whom to elect and whom not to elect. They started giving instructions. And this group began to set up militias. But they understand that there is no how they can move these militias without under the coverage of Hessmen. Most of the militias you are seeing, the terrorists you are seeing in the bushes, raping, kidnapping, they have nothing to do with cow rearing. Rather, they were moved under that umbrella and strategically located. Yet, Allah knows where to meet them. Ask yourself a simple question. Who facilitates release of whosoever that is kidnapped? Is the Mieti Allah in that state? If somebody is kidnapped in state A, go and look at who is the state chap uh, chap uh, chapter chairman of Mieti. He is the one to reach out. And government knows this. Your government, the so-called federal government, knows it. Do you understand? They know about it. And they are not ready to do anything about it. Not today, not tomorrow, not forever. So what is disturbing them currently? Because they don't care who is kidnapped. It's none of their business. They don't care how many vehicles are diverted on Ore Road from Lagos or diverted in uh, Auchi or diverted in Okene from Abuja. They don't care. The government does not care. But immediately there are individuals who have risen to the occasion to challenge this terror as unleashed on the indigenous population. What do you see coming out from different quarters? Government began to sponsor a lot of voices to attack these defensive fronts. What are they afraid of? The government understands that. Listen, you know when we talk about this, most people don't listen. This current government understands that power can shift hand. They might lose their grip on the security agency. It's possible. But they want to build something on ground that even though they are not controlling the center, they are controlling the units, including your village. Because by the time there are full and terrorists in your village, killing your people, your whosoever be your royal highness will want to go for negotiation. Don't kill my people. And they will say, okay, if you don't want it, that means you shall recognize us as part of indigenous population. And tomorrow they will set up a Saraki. And the next thing we hear, Hausa Fulani, Yoruba Fulani, Igbo Fulani, Kalaba Fulani, thereby Fulanizing every ethnic identity in Nigeria. That is what people don't understand. The federal government is fully deep into this business. And of course, don't expect your governors to do anything about it. Because they don't want to lose the seat. They don't want to lose the power. So why do you see them jittery? Since they began to see the arising of Eastern Security Network, the question you should ask yourself, a simple question. Has Eastern Security Network killed the indigenous people? No. Has Eastern Security Network attacked the Nigerian military, killed any military officer? No. What of police? No. Then why are they panicking over Eastern Security Network? The answer is not fetched. Fulanis do not want anything that will bring anybody into the same level with them. They are controlling the arms. They are the ones moving the arms to any community they want to unleash mayhem. 
Nigeria police has not used her helicopter for surveillance. Nigeria Air Force had never used her surveil uh, 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 jets on surveillance. They've knelt because they are in control of the government. And this is a project that must be achieved. There is a consensus among all of them to get this achieved. So, shockingly, contrary to what they expected, they are waking up to see that there are formations that are beginning to put a stop to the advancement. And this is the reason why tomorrow, don't be surprised, you, you will even hear those you don't even expect to come up and start attacking Eastern Security Network. Don't be surprised. Because in this part of the world, morality is zero. What leads a lot of people is money. Because people here believe money, money, money. So now they see that the same power they possess, which is arm, they use their arms to kill the people. They have not discovered that some people have now achieved the same power level, which is arm procurement to defend their land. They are not panicking. You cannot hear them spilling out trash, spilling out garbages, all forms of stinking and smelling things from their mouths. All these people who are speaking, where we are they? Nobody is asking a question. Who gave the Fulani's arms to be rampaging? Why is the government not taking responsibility of missing it? And it's so laughable to hear people not to discuss causation, but they are discussing effect or result. Eastern Security Council is a child of necessity. There is a causation and there is effect. The causation is that the government armed, tolerated, fund, covered, protected, even told us that it's better to give our ancestral land than to be killed. Yes, it's on print. Adesina said it. This federal government said it. And the same federal government told us they were to release 100 billion from Yetiala. They told us. So, you know, these guys think people are just stupid. When they were busy doing all these silly things, fooling themselves here and there, they felt everybody would just be there. No, it doesn't work. It's only a tree, according to Igbo adage, that hears that it will be caught and it still remains there. Humans are born for reactions. That is what Asrock should know. Asrock should understand. The day Asrock was bold to tell us, that is better for us to release our land than to be killed. They never knew they were sending a good message to us. Because as far as I am concerned, Asrock and the Fulani terrorists are on the same slate. No two ways about it. They are all in the same slate. If they are not, how did the government that's supposed to protect Nigerians, encourage Nigerians, haven't told us that these people who are killing are invaders, that they came from Sahel, the same useless and irresponsible government told us this, that these people came from across the border. And the same government is saying it's better for us to seed our ancestral lands than to be killed. The same government kept on and told us that they have given money, 100 billion to these people. And the same government opened her mouth and said to us, that Mieti Allah is a stakeholder. So what 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 do these guys take us from? When they were saying all this thing, they never knew we were taking a chronological documentation. Or they felt everybody is just as stupid as they think. I don't just understand. Oh, you think we are just robots? You do your own, then you don't express reactions. I think they are deeply deluded to have ever think like that. So what am I trying to say? In Biafran land, or should I say in Eastern Nigeria, we are attaining power equilibrium 
with the Fulani. In as much as the government believe the government believes that the Fulanis cannot be disarmed, they don't discuss about it. They don't ever discuss about disarming the terrorist headsmen. They don't. This is a no-go area for them. You dare not encourage it. They, you dare not consider it. But whenever the people began to go on defensive mechanism, that is when you see them jittering, talking about disarmament. Are you kidding me? When people were amputed and their human parts littered on the farmlands, you never thought about it? When, as I speak to you, if not recently, Eastern Security Network has taken it as a responsibility to clean up Utru Isukwato, it's impossible. Go and ask people. A lot of lives have gone from traveling on Utru to Isukwato. Or are you telling me from traveling to Okigwe to Enugu to Akenokwa Junction? Or go junction. It's not a good area. And no police doing anything. No army is doing anything. Now that we say enough is enough, somebody is not coming up to start speaking grammar. I think something is wrong with that person. I must tell you. Now the owners of the land the use of the land are not saying we are going sleepless in order to protect our mothers you rape that when in fact whenever you finish raping them you disembark their body parts you disembark litter their body parts you do same to our sisters our daughters you kidnap our people and order us in our land to pay ransom to you. You are in our bushes. And we are paying ransom to you. And nobody is talking about, about this. The governors are not thinking about it. Because not all of us. We are not important because we don't have a private jet to fly above the forest. Mm. Okay, then we should fold our hands. Somebody must be useless to have ever think like that. One thing is important in Eastern Nigeria. And what is that thing? That we are attaining power equilibrium with the Fulanis. If they have AK, we are going to have it for defensive mechanism in protection of our land. If they are in our forest, we are going to go after them in the forest. You cannot kill. You, it's practically impossible. You cannot come to our land, be kidnapping us. Then you expect us. What has Governor of Abia State even done? What has the, whosoever is the commanding officer in Abia State, what, what has the Commissioner of Police done in protecting our people who are traveling from Uturu to Isukwato? They have not done anything. Has police ever operated her surveillance chopper? No. Has Air Force operated, deployed her jet to, to, to carry reconnaissance operation? No. No. Has the military moved into the forest to dislodge? No. And it felt on deaf ears. Because if the governor is going through that road, he can go with up to 50 armored personnel carriers. Or at worst, if it's impossible, he will hire a private chopper, hire, hire a chopper and fly above. What of our mothers who cannot even afford good uh, road transport system? How much more? Air transport. So they should just be picked and worn on circumstance, fitted and uh, yeah, a smelling, stinking thing from Sahel. We just drag her to the bushes, rape her. If she's unlucky to an extreme, 
she will be disembarked, butchered like cows, and her body littered. Then you say we should fold our hands. How possible is it? It's never possible. It is never possible. It's not going to be possible today. It's not going to be possible tomorrow. And it's not going to be possible forever. People should understand that. The earlier people wake up to that realization, the better. No, no, no. You can no, no, no. It is a no-go area. You can never. It's a, a, a line you can never get to. You can never come to our land, rape us, kidnap us, place a ransom on us, we pay, you kill us, you come out on the road and start shooting. Like a friend of mine was telling me his own experience today. They were going to Enugu last week. Between Okiwa and Enugu, these guys came out from the bush and start shooting them sporadically. Thank God they were able to survive the attack. Then such a thing, no state government cares to know. No governor cares to know. No president cares to know. Then, somebody have taken it as a responsibility to organize his people, encourage his people, instead of looking for a state to buy, instead of looking for a political position to vie for, instead of looking for uh, a property to buy in Dubai, rather he's rallying resources to make sure we set up something reasonable to protect our land. And some one idiot is telling me not to follow him or not to, uh, 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 not to, you know, not to listen to him. I, are you telling me I'm under remote control? Are you, are you telling me that I am under remote control? My respect to whosoever that calls himself a governor of my state can only be given. And how does he, enjoy, uh, how does he get legitimacy from me when the lives and property of my people are protected? But when they are busy in frivolities or running here and there and people are dying, then you tell me to listen to me. Who born you? Who born you? Can never happen. I don't I can I can only respect you when you want that respect. It's as simple as that. That is just the way it is. We can only respect you when you want it. But when you decide to be animalistic and you expect us to respect you, you are kidding. You are kidding. Never. Not today, not tomorrow. You see everybody is rallying around Namdekano because he has been washed. He has been if Namdekano has messed up, nobody would have also given a damn about him. Of course. Because an average beer friend is an independent thinker. If he has treaded on the path of Wazrike and some of this guy, believe me, nobody would have equally given a damn about him. But we have been following him. We have saw things he lost in course of protecting us. He's busy organizing us. Now, one, one should I say, opportunist, who doesn't even know he's left and right just because he's a good slave he decided to you know play the card of psycho fancy and the betrayal card of a traitor then uh, he was given one seat then because that i should just listen to him no it doesn't work it doesn't work that way what we listen in you is your content not your noise making or the useless position you occupy it doesn't make sense to us. If you start being responsible, we give you respons we you know we we, we we be responsible to you. If you show magnitude of irresponsibility, we show you madness of irresponsibility. It's as simple as that. I can't just imagine 
how people are being killed. We are no longer to, you know, they impoverish us. They didn't give us a job. They didn't give us food. We say, okay. They didn't give us electricity. We say, okay. Even as I speak to you, this electricity, you see the illumination you are seeing is personally generated by me. Of course, it's not public generation. This is my private, I privately generated this lightning you're seeing here. And we say, okay, good and fine. You don't want to give us electricity, no problem. Give us educational system, good, ed nothing. Go to the university, just like advanced place you rear chickens. Simple as that. All the universities in Nigeria, federal and state, go and visit just a rotten place where they dump hopeless people without future. No electricity. I met one yesterday, a student of, um, what is it called, computer science, on his fourth year. And he told me that all he has been serving is mass from year one to his fourth year. No practical, he doesn't even understand what silicon is all about what the, the commonest parts of a computer he does not even understand we say okay good and fine you say you don't want to give us good education no problem okay allow us to live a fulfilled life let us just be alive and you say no you endorse extermination of our lives by telling us that it's better to give our ancestral lands to the Fulanis, which you told us they came from Sahel. Invaders. You are telling us it's better to... Man, you must be mad. Purely, the, in fact, if you ever know the definition of madness, believe you me, what you know is understatement to my intent. To whosoever is aiding and abating this onslaught going all over the nation just imagine from benue from taraba plateau southern kaduna southwest they have successfully intimidated and harassed this people into submission and the guests to our own. And we are telling them, it's better if the end comes for us to... No, 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 it can never happen. You can intimidate as much as you like. You can buy all the newspapers, keep on talking your rubbish. One thing we assure you is that this land can never be conquered. Not today, not tomorrow, not forever. We don't care about your imagination. Just imagine whatever you want. Instead of you to subjugate us, the way you have subjugated the so-called political class, instead of you to intimidate us, bully us, just the way you have done to the likes of Ohaneze, instead of you to do that, bring us to our knees, believe you me, Somalia will just be a paradise. It can never happen. So if the federal government is doubting the resolve of the indigenous people of Biafra to defend our land, I think they should wake up. I must tell you. Because this has come, gone that they will kill us, then the governors will have meeting with the murderers in the north of Mieti Allah, and they will boldly sit the same place with the governor and be instructing the governor what to say. The, them and the governor can be doing their coffee meeting. Their bonvita and the picnic meeting. That is their business. But the truth remains. We own the natural right to defend ourselves. It is simple as that. It doesn't matter what any idiot can say. You can say after all, is it today we'll be hearing it. For cost of years, we've been hearing uh, this one, this one. Did he stop us? We don't bloody care. We don't give a damn. In fact, the earlier you understand it, the better. We don't give a damn. 
because of course we don't even dream of seeking for any political position in the zoo we don't it's not in fact till the world comes to an end we don't dream it but we know how cost those positions are is a position of suppressions and oppressions so those with moral responsibilities can never we don't we don't the Lord God God forbid so what are we trying to say we must maintain our ground believe you me they are going to spend money to see how to blackmail us blackmail is the security network blackmail the indigenous people of Biafra although this is not the first this will not be the last they will do everything to undermine to blackmail you can see what they are doing to Sunday Iboho. just watch just watch that this young man rose up to protect his father's land just to watch who are they using the same people his brethren using yorubas some yorubas he decided to save guide their land to attack him that is just what they know because they have hashed a lot of saboteurs in the south and by extension north center there they have hashed you know, there is this competition among some Southerners who will sabotage more, who will, who will tell the, the, the Mieti Allah that he is more expert in doing their will in his own land. You know, there is competition among these so-called uh, people you call uh, your allies. There is a competition among them who is going to play the boy-boy card. And that's exactly what you're seeing. Sunday Boho who just came out to, 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 to help his father land. Or should I say his mother's land? You can see even his brethren are the ones. It, 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 it also happened to us. But ask yourself a simple question. Has any fool and me condemned the activities of Mieti Allah. They can never. They can never. They, they know. Is there no going? Even your presidency, Fulani control presidency told us, give your ancestral land and to be killed. So, you mean if our ancestral land is not important, then Nigeria is important to be protected. That's why I look at them as people who are headless. I look at them in a deep, in a deep concern that these guys don't think. They are too irrational to my likings. So, my ancestral land should be given to people you say they came from Sahel. But when a country wants to tell you to behave well to your citizen, is there is a Nigeria sovereignty? Nigeria sovereignty? Nigeria sovereignty? This Nigeria sovereignty? Are you mad? So, I, <laughs> it's really, it's really funny. Too irrational. Incoherent in their logic. Very, very incoherent. So, those you told us that came should have access. We should cowardly submit. But when United States say to you, observe human rights, you start shouting sovereignty. Oh, Nigeria land is not good for, for weeding, as in willing to foreign powers. But our ancestral land is good to give to people you told us they invaded. Mm, I see. You, you cannot see. People can pass cease without passing sense that's exactly how it looks some of these guys forget their title of excellency and uh, all those rubbish and stupid uh, accolades and titles so many of them just pass cease but they didn't pass sense and it's really an iron a great iron so what are we trying to say this evening we must be mentally fit 
we must be mentally fit we must be mentally fit for what is to come they will unleash vicious circle media attacks shouldn't panic you after all we are not born to be politically correct and the most amazing thing is that we are mentally prepared ahead so anybody can you know uh, unleash any form of mad reticulations it, it doesn't it doesn't remove and no it doesn't it doesn't in any way detach the hairs on our skin it doesn't so we must be resolute we must be mentally fit we must be mentally fit because as i speak to you there are three or should i say there are vicious circle crisis nigeria is going to face this is what people don't know you know um imagine a child the day has not broken and he's crying what happens when the day breaks we are just and is it we are entering to the mother of more problems let me tell you for every one of you who cares to listen you can listen if you don't want to listen then i wish you good luck go and write it somewhere more full and knees attack is going to come up why do i say that why do i say that they understand the importance of power they are not going to release this power forget uh, Tunubu's uh, chagrins and uh, some of them from, of course, Igbo land who are talking. They are not going to release this power. And they understand the need to use intimidation and subjugation to intimidate others so that the power will return. So they are going to unleash more hell. But guess what? Other people can sit idly and watch. You see, Biafra land. Is not go area. Is no go area. They are not going to relinquish power. They understand. In fact, they are. They, you see, there is argument they are now promoting. What is that argument? That rotational presidency is not healthy for Nigeria. What is Nigeria important to Nigeria is they call it quality leadership. So thereby demoting the concept of Igbo presidency or presidency to southwest so all those things they are going to just rubbish it do you understand me but they understand that the best way to subjugate to harass to intimidate those who will ask them why is by unleashing these guys they have strategically positioned in the forest these guys you're seeing in the forest their D-Day has not come. The day they are going to unleash terror is yet to come. Do you understand? They are just... You know, people... I wish people would just read. That's why I love history. Try to read. Try to look at historical antecedents. Try to dig from the activities of the man in the past. Then you will appreciate today. That is so new. Absolutely. Nothing is so near under the earth. Solomon said it. If you study history, you will understand that these games are just uh, events of yesterday's. And that's why one of the reasons why Namdekan and IPOB is having a successful footprint is because they don't delink you don't see any iota of disassociation from IPOB, from Onan and the Kalo, and the history. We intermarry history that whatever you are doing, we can reference to you, we can add, we can give a classical allusion of someone who had played the same role you are playing today. So it's not new for us.
by the virtue of browsing through the pages of history we can vividly tell you that what you are doing today what Mr. A did it yesterday and look at how that madness was cured we are going to apply the same curative measures on your today's madness I, 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 I tell you that I sincerely tell you that so all these guys you see them strategically positioning in the forest is ahead of when they will unleash them man every community will be talking inviting Mieti Allah to come and negotiate between them and the Fulanis. Listen to their game plan. You know, when we talk, some people, it's, it's so unfortunate that some people, I don't know from some glasses they, they view us from, but if actually they, they, they are objective and uh, sincere to themselves, they will understand that, you know, we are not in any way less educated or less rational we are educated we are rational and we are analytical so what they are doing is to position these guys ahead of the time you expect them to really wish power these guys will start terrorizing every community and every community head will be distracted with this terrorism unleashed and guess what they will be looking for Mieti Allah to start facilitating, should I say detente, if I should go by diplomatic language. They will be looking for Mieti Allah to start, you know, resolving crisis among them. Then, they will be perfecting the continuation of their regime. I tell you, that is exactly what their work is all about so that's why we, we we laugh over this thing so they are really in serious worry that they are not having a counter platform eastern security council is just giving them headache because they understand that that is the only counter force that can by all definition challenge their subtle movements i believe believe you me they are not panicking because of insecurity the presidency is not panicking what they are panicking is that how can there arise a structure that will be in the same contention with them how can they are, you see they are not asking you why yeah, the headsmen carrying arms, they are not asking you that. What they are going to be asking is that, why is EESN carrying arms? So what they expect, let me tell you, if Eastern Security Network is going to go with sticks or only flags, they will have no business with that. They will just be laughing and busy arming their terrorists in our forest with MPGs. They will just be doing that. They will laugh. But well, immediately they saw that Eastern Security Network is in possession of the same AK-47 their boys have. You can see how they are panicking all over the places. You can see how they are panicking all over the places. And for your information, I think this will be the last thing I will say, then we we'll come to the, the end of uh, this evening's uh, analysis because we have spent uh, uh, one hour seven minutes or one hour eight minutes. So it's a reasonable time we have spent. So. And for information, let me say this to you. If you like, accept it. If you don't like, don't accept it. No country on earth will ever help people who refuse to take responsibilities i repeat no country on earth will be interested to help people who refuse to take responsibility 
for you to experience explosion which is the outer outburst you must be ready for implosion which is the inner outburst sorry inner burst or internal burst if you are not ready for implosion you can never have explosion it, it just is a mathematical reality is a scientific reality and that is just the way it is so on that note we come to the end of this evening program you have to be safe you have to be strong mentally and above all you must pray for eastern security network you must support financially we must do everything humanly possible to make sure that they have come to stay the dangerous people among us are those who want to sound politically correct the most useless people among us are those who are prioritizing their external relationship at the detriment and peril of their own people with that i want to say thank you for joining us and do have a nice moment bye because i know our locations of uh, viewing differs or differ in a very reasonable uh, time frame i am mazichika austin and uh, we are here once again to to discuss to look at issues as they develop and uh, very very important we also understand that i have not been posting on my second uh, account mazichika austin and uh, the page uh, owing to the fact that the account mazichika austin and his page is under facebook restrictions so we now deemed it wise to get our fees here and uh, keep moving because in our common world we our common uh, statements we do say we must continue and also we do say we move also in this account chica austin i cannot post because facebook also restricted me not to or restricts me not to uh, also post on this platform but um thanks to okike that i can be here on live video to also put in my contribution as regards to how things are evolving and developing before our own very eyes so one of the things we are, I, uh, we are going to look at this moment is uh, Eastern Security Network. It has really been a trending, uh, a trending topic. Any media, locally and uh, international, that is not giving a a look on Eastern Security Network, seem not to really be part of this world and also seem not to really follow up you know, events as they evolve so there are a lot, a lot of things we have to talk uh, this moment as regards to eastern security network and also do not forget that issues we discuss here is on individuals view is my personal submission it does not in any way represent the official position of the indigenous people of Biafra. Uh, just like everyone else, I am throwing my individual thought on the general developments that are really uh, happening before our own eyes. So, and that's why we, we uh, that's why I deemed it very very important to to make us understand that 
So we are looking at Eastern Security Network as we have seen today, it has come to stay, no doubt about it. Um, also, it is a most desired security outfit we are seeing in Nigeria. Uh, and uh, I, I think some persons are trying to make review of what they have seeing how to um, get a version of ESN in their own society. I will explain to details what I meant by that because some persons might be asking, how can he say some persons are trying to make review of what they ha already have? The truth remains that the emergence of Eastern Security Network have a lot of things to teach everyone not just the Biafran people but the entirety or the the generality of Nigerians one of those things I feel that the emergence of ESN and the, their first litmus test which happened in Olo what that has indeed proven to doctors those who have been skeptical who have been so passive when it comes to establishment of a protective measures you know on the land some people some persons believe no individual aside government can have such temerity can have such logistical uh prowess to deliver so uh, when you look at eastern security network it was not basically uh, apart from securing the the eastern region or securing the Biafran land it has really provoked a lot of you know pessimists it has really provoked a lot of conservatives those who believe that when it comes to security no individual can have the infantry you know can have the temerity, the courage to float a reasonable and formidable platform. So it is really a, a groundbreaking event which goes beyond. Also, it's very, very important to share this program so that people can join and listen to what we are saying. So do, uh, do not forget to share this program, very, very important. So. Um, I'm talking about how Eastern the emergence of Eastern Security Network has really shaken the status quo. How it has really, people are talking about restructuring, but people don't know that the emergence of Eastern Security Network has done a lot of restructuring. And one of the strongest thing that has ever, or, or uh, audible thing that has ever happened to the formation and introduction of Eastern Security Network is the Olo saga you know the Olo saga was a litmus test where commentators policy makers felt that ESN was going to be crushed thereby throwing more reasons for the conservatives and the pessimists those who believe nothing can work aside the status quo but ESN ability to to maneuver the entire complex situation in you know, um and uh, forcefully and advancedly force the primordial powers should I say into submission or into retrieval is really is really a commendable progress and that we, we we really really um i think brought to us a new beginning in the whole thing we are doing very very important so when i said earlier i, I said earlier that um some individuals or some persons believe there is a need for review of whatever they had earlier before now you know um let me let me give you a case study 
the uh, Oduduwa people, or should I say this, uh, let me go by the, the ground at which Amotoku was formed. Because you should remember that Amotoku was basically formed by the southwestern governors, not the pro Oduduwa Republic elements. Remember, Amotoku was more of a mainstream formation. Why is it mainstream formation? Amotoku was a, 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 a child of those who are on the mainstream space, those who believe that Nigeria should remain warm, but they need security. They, they, in one hand, they are sounding politically correct. In another one, the fear of losing their indigenous land forced them into gathering together or rallying together to form a motor. I'm talking about the governors. So when you look at what happened in the Yoruba, you find out that because of the political undertone, because of the political foundation that led to the formation of Amotekun, Amotekun must play to the gallery. Amotekun must be at the regulations of those who are conscious to be politically correct, which is the governors and the, the uh, southwest politician Amoteku is not a brainchild of self determination project. Remember, now when you look at ESN, ESN is not floated by those who want to be politically correct, ESN is not floated by those who want to play within the gallery, the political space gallery. ESN is not floated by those who are at the mainstream. ESN is established and floated by those who are conscious of the indigenous identity, who are in demand for self-determination, and above all, who are not interested to please anyone other than the indigenous people, their own people. So, and that is why if you look at what is happening in Southwest or the Yoruba land and what is happening in Eastern Nigeria or the Biafran land, you will discover that you are not having similarities in approach. If you look at the Yoruba land, you find that despite the formation of Amoteku, those with indigenous identity, those who are conscious to demand for self-determination, are still revolting. They want themselves to be identified, not minding whatever political structure like Amoteku that has been laid on the ground. Do you understand me? Amotokun is on the ground. But remember that Amotokun is a brainchild of the political class. And this political class are by extension and loyalty proses and protégés of the caliphate. In most cases, they don't want to offend the powers that be. They don't want to offend the caliphate. So, Amotekun might be there, but because of the individuals that initiated the Amotekun project, Amotekun will have a lot of obstacles, especially in entrenching and protecting the core Yoruba interest. And that's why, if you look at Amotekun, you find out that Amotekun has been finding it so difficult to effectively operate despite the jumbo logistical uh, you know um, donations you get from southwest governors Amoteku seem to be a toothless bulldog because you cannot separate a structure from the founder that is the mistake people make if you want to know the, the reason for docility or activeness of any structure investigate the founder 
if the founder is a mainstream player, the structure will also be a mainstream player. If the founder is a conservative, the structure will be a conservative platform. If same applies on Libra thought, same will also happen to the structure. So what are we talking about? You see that Eastern Security Network is not throwing a lot of challenge even in the other areas. The problem we are going to face, I'm not saying the, the Biafran people, the, but on the general um, country view, one of the problems that are going to be seen in Oduduwa Nation, in Middle Belt, and a lot of non-Fulani areas, mark what I'm going to tell you. And remember, it's born out of analysis, so I don't, I'm not telling you I'm prophesying. One of the problem the non-Biafran areas are going to face is internal rivalry. In Biafra land, IPOB has been able in her wisdom to manage, to curtail those sources or channels of internal rivalry. But in the non Biafran areas, these are one of the challenges they are going to face. And it's already happening in Odudwa land, in Southwest. What is that challenge? If you look at Southwest now, they have a motoku. But because those who are not ready to play the loyalty card to the caliphate don't trust. Amotoku, which is more of a political formation formed by those who, whose loyalty are still on the caliphate. That's why you see somebody like Sunday, Iboho, and the, all of them rising up to demand for protection of their land, not minding the existentiality of Amotoku. You understand what I'm talking about? Okay, I will definitely. Mazazaya. Thank you, sir. I will definitely. So, you can now understand what I'm talking about. So, you find out that despite the fact that you have a motoku in Southwest, those who are watching what is happening in Biafran land, so you mean that individuals who are not in the government, who don't have faith in their governors, can float Eastern Security Network to protect the entire East. That is why you are seeing the likes of Sunday, Iboho, not interested on a Motocom platform. He is not interested to work with a Motocom platform because he understands that for them to really have the desired protection they needed, they must go on the path and methodology of Eastern Security Network, which is devoid of the governors who are loyal to the caliphate and the political halos you have in Eastern Nigeria. So it's really amazing. Now let's now look at, because we are talking about Eastern Security Network, and how, um, what she really portends for us. Now let's look at Eastern Security Network. Look at other existing platforms in Biafran land, and how um, IPOB has been able. If you, if you have been following uh, about for the since, uh, should I say the post or low saga? Uh, has really been a really an eye-opening era for a lot of people. If you look at if you look at the commendations coming from World Ebo Congress, coming from a lot of individuals, uh, you, you can now see that people um, people are beginning um, people are beginning to see that IPOB needs to be courage. IPOB needs to be related 
not not attacking because you know if you watch the evolution of IPOB how IPOB have been evolving a lot of things have been happening one thing IPOB has maintained is consistency in her methodology and it's a very difficult thing for you to maintain nobody is so difficult if you are not caught for that forget it you can maintain it because you're you you have a bribe to face you have a um, betrayal to face you have backstabbing to face you have a lot of conspiracies to face so if you're not actually sold out to deliver or to fight for the betterment of your people believe you me you cannot so that's why one of the things most people are recognizing now including world Evil congress is this fact that nam de Kano has done which no one in this dispensation has been able to do or achieve so if 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 in course of for getting to a decade now despite all manners of shocks that have come on his way he has been consistent in proving that he loves his people he means well to us and that's why you see the reasonable ones i'm considering revised gear but let's also look at the biafran land from a general perspective existing structures that have been there and what the future holds you know most people keep talking about restructuring restructuring but one thing they fail to understand is that IPOB has already forced the country to be to be restructured what people are looking is uh, just a media presentation of restructuring but the real or should i say the real content of restructuring is already done and what is this risk content of restructuring the real content content of restructuring is when you have the ability to control the protection of lives and, uh, and properties in your land you have done the rudimentary part of restructuring any other form of restructuring is just on the surface the real form of restructuring is being in charge of protection of lives and properties and which indeed eastern security network have really really not just arrived but has done a lot of consolidations i i, I listened to one of the royal highnesses uh Aziz in in Olo, and i think the interview was done in bbc british broadcasting corporation you know bbc Ebo. and i listened to what that man said and you know what it means every essay is loyal to the governor but the man said on clip on video that the eastern security network have been protecting their people So you understand what that means so if we have a system because i think we are you know at a stage that there is a global problem take note of that why am i saying that because you know there are these individuals who believe um, everything will be done by them by internationally constituted body. It doesn't happen. The world is facing the most difficult challenge as I speak to you because of it's too early to say but this is my opinion because of uh, relatively weak leadership in US. That is my personal view anyway. And the world is facing a very severe turbulences to the extent that china is revoked uh, you know reviewing recognition of british passport to those in hong kong which never happened china wouldn't have think about that 
when America was having the former president. And we're also having a very disturbing time. The Israeli embassy in India, there was explosion outside the embassy. So, 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 so we are arriving in the world that countries are going to be mindful of protecting their own territory more than being interested in what is happening uh, XYZ. So because of that, any part of Nigeria that fails to put up something ahead, especially something in protecting her territory, we have her territory overrun. A, you know, people don't understand this. Britain have her own internal problem. She's battling with COVID-19, which is biting hide on her economy because the economy is already a shock. One. America is also having her own internal problem, ranging from divided nation to a, a, a economic destroyed or relatively destroyed nation down to a lot of things down to the, the you know the the sudden awakening and the harsh policy foreign policy coming out from china from beijing so when these countries are way down with a lot of issues you don't expect them to go far in working it out for Nigerian state. So, and that is why you see these terrorists rampaging, doing all they can do. Because most of these countries are not interested. So, in midst of that, the only thing that every reasonable part of Nigeria will do is to activate a defensive mechanism geared towards protecting their land. Because if you look at the military, the Nigerian military is already a very, very overwhelmed war. The, the, the officers are complaining of poor welfareism, welfare system, talking about poor equipments, talking about sabotage and the government does not have money to to solve these problems of theirs same applies to police poor welfare and a lot of things so because there is a high demoralization of personnel why the terrorists and their and those funding them are on a high morale so what in such situation you don't even need to wait any governor for you to activate defensive mechanism. And that is exactly what IPOB has done for us. It's a wonderful gift. But one thing we, we must also look at is how have been or, or how is this Eastern Security Network managed by those that have been offered to. Very, very important. How are we able to manage it? Because it's not all about getting an, uh, getting an offer or getting a gift. Another thing is that, are you able to manage it? Do you understand the importance of it? Do you understand the value? Because what you don't understand the value, you will, you will misuse it. Look at Dele Momodu. If you watch his interview, he says something, he says something, that Eastern Security Network is most disciplined and organized. Do you think Dele was speaking to, to, to make you happy? Or to make be friends? They are speaking based on the level of coordination they have seen, the level of technological advancement they have seen, how Eastern Security Network was able 
In fact, one of the ways you rate a high security outfit is the ability to manage what we call collateral damage. One of the problems American military is battling to tomorrow is the degree of collateral damage in Iraq. What is collateral damage? A military spe spectrum. When you go for a, a, comfort, a, a war or a battle, how you are able to make sure you mitigate against loss of civilians' lives, the world does not joke with it. The world does not joke with it. In fact, if the world wants to rate any military outfit, Apart from the technological advancement, another thing the government, the world race, is the level of control in terms of collateral damage occurrences. And one of the things Eastern Security Network has proven to us, especially in Olo, is that they can successfully launch an operation in defense of the land without causing collateral damage, without causing deaths on the side of our people. The ones that we are recorded was include, in fact, the ESA and BBC Ibo said it. Those people, the casualties, I think up to five people, the casualties that was counted, civilian casualties, were done by the Nigerian security agents. So you cannot see the, the the reason why the progressive minds are beginning to support Eastern Security Network. And remember, whatever you whatever you present, that thing you present can only be tested by time and events. And one of the things Eastern Security Network has proven to us is that they have a high coordinated mechanism they understand Geneva Convention they understand the usage of arm, uh, arms and weapon and of course they understand what we call surgical operation so when you have these features embedded in any security apparatus or a security system so security system is of 21st century security system and that's where, where we you see what it will come and of course it's very very important for us to also bring our attention to some platforms that are really endorsing eastern security network. they never endorsed if um, if any one could endorse Eastern Security Network, it is not what Igbo Congress. Why? Because when you look at what Igbo Congress, what Igbo Congress is different from Ohaneze. Ohaneze, you see mostly political job seekers in Ohaneze. Ohaneze is more of um, um, a gathering of local traitors. That is where you easily get, that is the Ohaneze composition. Ohaneze is just a hashing point. Whether Ohaneze youth or the main, the Otogerian Ohaneze, I'm talking about the Edali Ohaneze. You, you just, what you see in Ohaneze, Ohaneze is more of a, a social, cultural composition of a, those, uh, you know, a group of competitors. Who, who are competing among themselves on who will serve the caliphate better. So, Ohaneze uh, 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 endorsement or no endorsement is not really a serious issue because they are more of uh, who offers higher takes Ohaneze's, uh, gets Ohaneze's press statement support. That is exactly what Ohaneze is. It's not insult. This is a reality. Make your research, make your finding. If you want to get the most 
destructive elements in our land just go to Hanese, you get them easily you don't struggle for them poopers those with passion for servitude you get them now when you look at world Igbo congress what Igbo congress is is not domiciled in uh, Igbo land take note of that Hanese is just here in Igbo land you understand me uh, Ohaneze is more of a cultural version or sociocultural group that, that are being formed by the governors. The governors fund them. Ask them, ask Ohaneze, how do you survive? They go to government houses all over the state, whether Ohaneze at the state chapter or Ohaneze at national chapter they or wherever you see your hanese they go to the state government houses whether hanese in kanu or kaduna they go to the government houses begging that is just how they survive that is there is no reasonable channel at which hanese is funded by except the police whoever is the governor there funds hanese so because they they get whatever they survive with from the government house you don't expect them so but what Igbo congress what do you see in what Igbo congress what Igbo congress they are not domiciled in Igbo land these are intellectuals who are living outside Igbo land they are all over the world this is where you see men of resources and they don't easily talk you hardly hear one Igbo con uh, World Igbo Congress making a press statement. No, because this is where you see technocrats. Ellis, the real content of Ellis. You see people with high mental uh, profiles. This is where you see them. So if you see them endorsing, giving credence to Eastern Security Network, it is not out of sentiment. They can never support a ragtag platform. They will never. Do you understand me? They, they can never. So, what will Congress for what will Congress to endorse Eastern Security Network shows you that they have taken a critical and a sincere analysis overview of Eastern Security Network and they now realized that if we miss what we have now definitely we are reunited as a people you understand me and if you look at what it will Congress what it will Congress if you look at the, the quality of individuals in World Igbo Congress, you will now understand what the endorsement of Eastern Security Network means. Why Ohaneze is the local version of retired saboteurs? You know, when you sabotage in your youthful youth and you get retired, then you log into Ohaneze. Do you understand me? So, what Igbo Congress, because you see them mostly in the United States and Europe, most of them have contacts with international bodies. So, if they have endorsed Eastern Security Network, what that implies is this. There is more open door for Eastern Security Network on international space. Do not be deceived. If Ohanese does this, it makes no sense. To me, I told us earlier that this is a personal submission. Why it does not make much sense to me is that Ohanese does not and has never projected or pushed herself internationally. Go and make your research. Ohanese has never. In fact, Ohanese has never 
done any international projection of Igbo interest. Organizers have never done that. But what Igbo Congress, because most of them are domiciled in international arena, and most of them have direct contacts to international actors. So when they endorse Eastern Security Network, it makes more sense to us than when a stooge of the governors who are slaves to the caliphate are doing that. So you cannot understand how it goes. You cannot understand how it goes. So if we have World Ibo Congress working with the indigenous people of Biafra, it's a credence. Why is it a credence? Because we are not having intellectuals. You should understand that IPOB is the, should I say, uh, IPOB is the, the mother of them all. And I think somebody will understand what I'm saying here. Why is IPOB is mother of them or is that? When you look at Ohaneze, for instance, in Ohaneze, what you see mainly is a composition of... A, in fact, Ohaneze is a more of a, a party team. Take for instance, when PDP was there, they put Niamwood because Nyamodo is also a sympathizer to PDP. When APC entered, you understand me? When APC entered, they put the man we are seeing today. And on the day of his election, did you see any PDP governor of Igbo land in the stadium in Oweri? No. The people you saw there was a uh, the most state governor and that of a bony. Two of them <laughs> were standing while the the man was on his wheelchair. Was he on wheelchair or seat anywhere? I cannot remember what my eyes saw that day. So Ohaneze is more of a party team. Any party that is in control, just um, uh, should I I think Ohaneze is the social cultural branch of any political party on seat. It's as simple. That is the best way to define define Ohaneze. What is Ohaneze? Ohaneze is a social cultural branch of any party that is on seat. It's as simple as that. Now, when you look at World Ibo Congress, because of the quality of individuals, whatever they look into also have a reasonable support because of their wider coverage. While Haneze does her own thing locally, World Ibo Congress engages the world. Now, IPOB being the mega platform, why? Because when you look at IPOB, you find out that IPOB has everything you think about. Everything you think about is in IPOB. Everything you think about. Just think about it. You get it in IP. Absolutely everything, not relatively. So, what are we trying to say? IPOB, unlike Ohanese and World Evil Congress, have proven a point. And what is that point? When you look at leadership, for instance, it is only IPOB that have killed listen very carefully, that have killed the acephalous nature or acephalous leadership nature that is not needed for freedom fighting or self-determination. Do you understand me? Or do I repeat myself? I said, why is IPOB standing so tall? among all this and i repeat i said it is only ipob that has 
demoted or decommissioned the acephalous leadership nature that is not needed for self-determination project. What do I mean by that? The, if you look at Ohaneze, you see high spirit of Ndikwe, Nandekwe. And the same spirit of Ndikwe and Ndekwe has affected the lives of Ohaneze in a way that you don't even know which one is Ohaneze. So because of such social structure, such a people can never gain their freedom under such platform. Any platform that is penetratable, any platform that is complex, any platform that is highly acephalous can never be a platform for freedom fighting because we have what we call multiplicity of control some will be hearing come some will be hearing go some will be hearing stop some will be hearing come back so you don't have you don't need such platform centrality is the key especially in freedom fighting that is that's why when i look at people talking about a discourse and i laugh i say well one cannot talk more than his mind. Centrality, as far as freedom fighting, centrality is the key. And that's why till tomorrow God does not have a deputy for information. He does not. So, all these platforms can never be a platform to even organize a social uh, as a security network let me not tell us something we don't know one of the reason why the eastern governors can never and will never float successfully a regional security i'm talking about the eastern governors from delta down to cross river down to ebony down to delta the reason why they can never and will never successfully float Eastern or regional security network is simple. Do you know why? Because no one of them will allow his fellow to rule them. That's why whenever they tell you we are forming a um, Eastern or we are forming a regional security, when they go there, hope and the David Dumai will just be there because they are APC. They will be there to please the power that be at Asorok. You understand me? And uh, the other ones will probably try to make it a PDP affair. So do you know what? Those who are of the APC government will not prove to the PDP ones, okay? If you think because your, ma your majority or most of us in eastern part of Nigeria, are most, most states are PDP and they want to teach us, want to tell us you are the majority, they will sabotage it. That's why they can never float any security outfit for you. They can never because there is power tussle among them. There is high arrogancy among them. There is a competition of whom to be the member, they are, you see, you see that, you see how parochial they are in mind. One again, I'm working out, okay. There is a more devastating situation, scenario, and they are just within themselves. Do they even talk to themselves? Do they, is there communication among themselves? No, so you cannot see, and because. There is a severe contentions among them, externally instigated among them. That's why you see them destroying even other structures that ought to have be in a, 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 an exemplary structures. Take for instance, because 
the APC governors in Southeast, for instance, are not ready to allow the Ohanese President General to be nominated by the PDP platform. These are two APC, Ebony and uh, Imo, for instance. And the rest of them are of PDP. Uh, sorry, I think um, Anambra Abga, uh, Abia, EA PDP, then Enugu PDP. So because the APC governors want to prove to these ones that even though we only two in Southeast, we will use Abuja power to tell you that we will impose, we will, we will nominate who will be the governor, uh, the Ohanese president. And they will do it and successfully achieve that. What will you see from Abia? Abia governor will not be interested. Whosoever be the Hanese the president, general is none of his business. So he's just Ohanese for a bony and Imo state. And then Ambra does not even give a down. It, does Enugu care? Does Enugu did Enugu recognize? They don't recognize. So you see how individual rivalry among these people are destroying even these platforms that would have been a vocal voice so in a simple term if the governor of a state for instance is it does not like ipub he will not tell the 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 president general he paved way to him and say go to this open and condemn them do you understand so, because you have a system, a social system, where everybody is a Zonya Obalam, you will end up becoming the prey before the external enemies. The danger that is coming. You will be the prey because these individuals don't care. If the home is on fire, the available jet steaming in the airport is the one to take them outside the country. Do they give it down? So it is only IPOB who came and built a central system. Because for you to have a su successful operation, especially security operation, there must be a single source of communication. If that source of communication is tampered or there is duality, on that source of communication, believe you me, that operation is dead on arrival. And one of those things IPOB did for cost of years is to make sure she centralized a system in which information, coordination, will come from the one single man that has been tried and tested and is not trusted and it will flow down to even the man who is down in the village and that's exactly what or the level at which Mazinam the Kano has gotten let me tell you jealousy aside our village gossips aside the truth remains that this man, in course of years, we have critically watched him. We have we have seen a lot of things him that came on his way. We saw him enduring, and today he's worthy of our trust. He didn't, you know, get our trust out of. Inducement. He never induced anybody, monetarily or otherwise. He spoke and we watched him on the time of him acting. And he acted. So he's worthy of our trust. And of course he's not fighting for, the, for an estate for himself. He's fighting for the generality of us. And today we cannot see. He has established a central command system. And whether you like it or not, that singular act is 
the savior of Easterners. When you have a very single source of command and control, definitely you have achieved the first condition for success. And that's exactly what, how, it, how it looks like. Because in the entire East and even beyond, to, to a reasonable extent in Middle Belt and Oduduwa, people's ear are dedicated to Namdekan. Do you understand me? I tell you. So, another thing IPOB has done that is worth giving credence to is the ability to diplomatize beyond Biafran land. That is what most of you know. We take time to highlight all these things because we it might really not. Uh, let me check time. I, I will have spent so far so that think, uh, okay, fifty four minutes we have spent so far. Now another thing that is worth looking at is his level of diplomatization. Has he been able to? market Biafra to the minds of non-Biafrans. And this is what most of us don't take note of. Today, when you talk about Biafra, how does it sound to a man in Middle Belt? How does it sound to a man in Yoruba? This is another thing you don't understand. The, 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 the individuals you have in Ohanese could not do this. In fact, the, the individuals we have in Ohanese were weaponizing Biafra. They were presenting Biafra consciously. They know what they were doing. They were presenting Biafra as an anti others. Yes. A simple way. How, how did Ohanese do it? How did Ohanese weaponize Biafra? How did Ohanese make Biafra to be a dangerous gift to the rest? Simple way. If you talk about Biafra, what Ohanese will go to newspaper and say in the first place is this. Listen. Ohanese will go to newspaper and say, we don't want to wait again. We want to live at peace with others. Do you know what Ohanese is telling others is that anything Biafra is a, a non-peace to you. If we are telling you Biafra, we are offering you crisis. We are offering you debt. We are offering you penury. That is a, a, simple, a simple summary of how Ohanese have been destroying the idea and the concept of Biafra. It's as simple as that. Whenever you hear them saying, we don't want peace, so like you, you listen to the, uh, the Ohanese, the last man who spoke, uh, uh, the last press statement, he said, eh, eh, the Indigo want to be at peace with others. Indirectly telling others that anything Biafra means not being at peace with you. But what did, how did uh, Namdekano and IPOB we are able to reconstruct this disservice and self-inflicted pains by our so-called organizers and all the rest of them? Today, Biafra is, does no longer mean war. Because if Biafra means war, the likes of Dele Momodu cannot be talking about it. The likes of Showere the likes of um, some individuals in middle, uh, middle Belt and others cannot be associated with. Nobody will be associated to anything that will endanger him. And that's exactly what Ohanese have spent years trying to tell others, non Biafrans, that whenever you talk of Biafra, we mean endangering you. But Mazen Namdekanu took time, consistency. You know, people say he was talking so much 
on radio but they never understand the importance of consistency in information dissemination if you want to remake a mind you have to preach that single message once and once and repeatedly repeatedly until that person hears nothing than what you want him to hear and that's exactly what he did he took time to market Biafra concept to make these guys you know the non Biafrans to understand that Biafra is not thinking of talking about conquest it's not all about it's not about conquest is not about expansionism is not about relegations is not is not about suppression that biafra simply means the desire of a people to live their god's living life and when these guys now had another dimension of Biafra. They said, okay, is that what it means? We never knew. But your fathers in Ohaneze have been weaponizing it. And they began to have a rethinking. Formally, when you hear Biafra, it means death. It means killing. It means rampaging. It's not just the external people that did that. I'm talking about your fathers my fathers in Ohanese took their years to keep on presenting Biafra as a troublemaking meaning. Then consciously they did that because they knew there is no other way to to discourage people from supporting them, trying to tell them that Biafra means hostility to you. So IPOB took time to reach out to the non Biafra neighbors, the Middle Beltans. You can see one of the last. You, 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 you can see one of the last press state, uh, one of the uh, press statement offered recently by Mazen Namdekan. He spoke excellent, excellently about the Hausa people. And. I took time to go to the comment sections of every single local newspaper that lifted that news. And I, I saw what the house has said, what their responses were. They were so amazing. They were shocked that something good could be said about them. And why did Mazen Namdekanu take time to do that? Mazen Namdekanu did what we call offensive diplomacy there. What is the offensive diplomacy? Because the Fulanis keep telling the houses that Biafrans mean threat to them. Which is a, a really big lie. So that act by Mazen Namdekan scissors, put a scissors to the age-long lies peddled against us. And that ought to have been the responsibility of Ohaneze, if I'm not mistaken, to rewrite the history from a subjective point of view to objective point of view, which simply means that Biafra means the entrenchment of the Igbo philosophy that says Ebebere Ugobere, which is social justice. And they could not do that. They knew the truth, but they could not do that because they don't want to lose their envelopes. That is just how funny. So you understand what I'm talking about? So on a standard engagement, IPOB took a very reasonable number of time to engage externally. And today you can see what is happening in Oduduwa. In fact, one of the things we are, that is scaring the Fulanis, as I speak to you, is the solid relationship coming from the Dudua people to Biafrans, especially IPOB. Now, why is this scaring the Fulanis? The Fulanis would not have threatened or feel threatened if the relationship is coming from the governors of Southwest to the governors of 
southeast or south south they wouldn't have bothered because they know no matter the relationship it will just be handed over to them but what why the full and you see sultan of sokoto having meeting with me yesterday or today i can't remember vividly why you see the presidency jittering why you see there is panic everywhere where is where you see there is worries and anxiety on the side of the Fulanese is this. They have not discovered that there is indigenous and organic relationship that is developing so strongly between the Odudua conscious sons and daughters and the Biafran's conscious sons and daughters. And also, by extension, is happening among the new pace, the Birons. The, uh, the, the, the other non Fulani Northerners. And they can't watch this happening. It's really a disturbing development. It's really a disturbing evolution. And they are worried. Assuming the, the, the relationship that is coming up is floating mainstreamly at the level of the political class. Fulanis will not be worried. They won't panic. No need for jittering. But they have discovered that the relationship is moving indigenously and at the level of the base. So you understand what I'm talking about? And it's a concern. So that is how much IPOB has been able to couple some things. And also, if, if we look at war stage, if we look at war stage, it's also a good one. Yes, at the level of international relations, it's really a good one. Uh, that I might not really be interested to dive deeper because of the rocky pathways and uh, a lot of mind-blowing information that if we want to dig it, it's really, really not a healthy one for, for some individuals. But the truth remains that when you look at international stage, you find out that IPOB has done a very wonderful thing. Let me let me give us a kind of a tip. When you look at when you come to Capitol, I'm talking about the Congress, the U uh, the U.S. Congress. That this is a very strong lobbying place. Um. Who lobbies higher, or should I say, who is consistent in lobbying? Guess the order of the day. You know, most people don't understand how IPOB has been able to, you know, um. Most people don't know. I'm very careful because I want to talk about international dimension. So that I'm very careful with my words because I know here a lot of people listening to us, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I also understand the enemy of Bia France are also here. So I will be critically, that is the last uh, se se segment I'm going to talk, then I call it a day. So I will be conscious to my words. My editions will be carefully selected. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that is by the way anyway so what, what are we trying to say when you when you look at international dimension IPW has done marvelously well against what Ohaneze ought to have been doing for us uh, most, most of us do know that prior to this time the issue of Biafra has really been a suppressive one but thank big to Kike because no matter can suppress it any longer no no it has crossed the rubicon so no but no matter can suppress it but let's look at the international dimension and that is the last one we talked before we go as Ohanese or the governors at the level of Eastern Governors Forum has there been any time 
you see them internationalizing the interest of our people absolutely the, even let's just say not with Biafra identity let's just say not with Biafra identity has there been any time even though the the term Biafra is forbidden in their on their lips you know let's say let them use the word Igbo or Eastern region has there been any time they showed it as a matter of interest to project our interest within the international arena? Absolutely no. They have never. It took IPOB years, it took IPOB years to remake the international status quo. It took IPOB years. This is what most of us do not understand. It took IPOB a very reasonable time investment, money investment, to do what we call reshaping of international structure. Because no one cares to go and lobby for the interest of Ndibo. Nobody took it as a matter of urgency to project us as a people. No one. No one at the international level. Even at a time when Benjamin Netanyahu, the current Israeli Prime Minister, used his mouth to recognize the genocide happening in Biafra. No Ohanese personality or Igbo governor or whatever you call them wrote a letter of thanks to Israeli embassy. Absolutely not. Go and look for the clip. Israeli Prime Minister recognized genocide in Biafra. I'm, to, I'm not saying uh, go to May or talking about Ben Gurion or talking about uh, Area Sharon, those age long prime ministers of Israel. I'm talking about the current Israeli prime minister. It is on video and on the internet. We are here recognize the genocide happening in Biafra. Or has they never thanked him for that? Why would they? They want their location to stop from the caliphate. The governors of that time never even thanked the ambassador of Israel to say at least the Prime Minister of Israel, one of the sophisticated and advanced nations of the earth. Spoke for in our favor. They never did that. They allowed that to die. Why? We know the reason. And your knowledge is far better than mine. So, it took IPOB years to unearth to give life to the issue of Biafra. And that's where I have, uh, uh, I must say this very, very important, that's where uh, I have a lot of, do I say it looks really humorous. When I hear people say they are pro Biafra. And you are telling me to own you a respect when you are localizing something that ought to be an international affairs. Yes, because Biafra is imagined as a nation state to be among the committee of nations. So you must tell those that you are going to be with. You must announce your arrival. But most of these so-called pro-Biafra group, you see them just running within their local ground and uh, live in the world of fantasies it does not happen it took ipob years to engage and not just engage to do a constructive engagement and today nigeria is mercilessly beating off diplomatically i tell you nigeria is diplomatically in a mess 
deep mess. Go and find out. Make your research. Go see of IPA, IPOB's offensive diplomacy. It was really offensive. Viciously launched. And of course, deeply enhanced. I must tell you that. And Nigeria can never forget. They can never forget the experience. Is in UU, is in US, is in UN, is in AU. I say it's viciously, it was a vicious circle launch. And I can never forget it. Well, uh, because I'm really mindful of what we talk diplomatically, we'll come to the end of this program from here. I want to thank every one of us, and very, very important. We note that Eastern Security Network has come to stay and they need our support monetary, logistically, financially, name it. Even on the part of prayer, they need our support. In the midst of Fulani rampaging, they need our support and we must stand in for them. Is only a fool that rejects those who offered voluntarily without being paid to protect them. It's only a, it's only fools that can reject such gesture. So from here I want to thank you. I want to appreciate you for staying. And above all, Mokike, grant us our dream and desire. Do enjoy yourself and have a nice weekend.